I love Simon Kim Fish because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so we're highlighting black businesses, but we are going live. Are we are we doing this live? Uh, Is this live? I don't know. I know. Chris, can you answer her? Yeah, it's a live. I, you know, it's a live stream. Hi, everybody. This is Today is Thursday. Today's Thursday is when our podcast comes out, Sherry. I know, but Come I was on. I didn't know if it was live, so I was doing a live. Oh, do a live, right? First of all, Tell welcome people. to Two Funny Mamas. I'm Kim Whitley, and that is Sherry. Yeah, but you can't... <laughs> Jesus, you, I'm doing. I'm I'm telling people to jump over to watch us on Two Funny Mamas. So no, it looks like you're well, looking at yourself and admiring your makeup and hair. That's what it looks no, I'm like. I'm looking at you. Look, no, I'm looking no, at no. you in my camera. You look like the girl that went to um, the Cheesecake Factory and was tripping. Okay. And she kept looking at her phone. That's what you look like. <laughs> you look Sorry, like, I, I got to look at myself so much in the phone while I'm on a date with this man. And I'm going to go ahead. Kim, Kim you be the man. Me. Kim, you be the man. You're at Cheesecake Factory. She's on her phone. You're thumbing through 740 pages of menu, and she won't look up. No. Chris, did you see the video? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They it's were in a, the car. It's a big deal. Okay, I'm going to tell. I'm gonna get off of okay. this live so I can get back to the podcast. I can be the man. Give me one. Hey, hey, you look good. That's why I picked you off the website. I swiped right. I swiped on you. But you're going to spend your time in the phone. That's the problem. That's why you ain't got no man. Because you've been in the phone all the time and you don't even, you good men walking by. I done took you to this nice restaurant, the Cheesecake Factory, and all you're going to do is keep looking at yourself? Well, why don't you go home and be with yourself? How about that? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a man that doesn't have anybody. Let can me bring, let me just can answer. Can you bring me some more sauce? Can I'm you bring me some more sauce? Please. If you want to see a live Two mm -hmm. Funny Mamas, uh, mm -hmm. go to YouTube and and uh, click Two Funny Mamas podcast, and we're going live right now because my girlfriend tripping. All right, y'all, bye. For Why is she talking about? I'm like, bye. <laughs> Gosh, you crazy. This is a problem. We are all live. We are talking. Crazy. Look at it. See, you acting just like the Cheesecake Factory girl. When I tell you, I want to, ooh, she was killing me. You know, um, <laughs> everybody, welcome to Two Funny Mamas. I'm Sherry Shepard. Uh, are you kidding? Ten minutes later, you going to say welcome? I've already said your name. We've already done a skit. A my skit. blood sugar was dropping, so I had to go get an orange. You done drove me and my blood sugar down. So look, we don't, look how she keep looking at herself. You're looking at yourself in the Two Funny Mamas Square. How could she not? I, could tell, I know you too well. You know how long I've known you? When you think you look know. all pretty and perfect, you're looking at yourself and you change your voice. That's not true. When I That's look down, true. it's because I'm looking at I'm looking at you. See, I love it when you're mean to me because I need people to see how mean you can be because they're always on me saying, why are you mean to Kim? Why are you so mean to Kim? And I need them to see the real you. So keep on. I'm just going to no, be calm. No. What they're going to say in the comments is, you know what, Kim, you're right. She is acting like that girl. That's what she's going to say. They're going to say, watch. No, and this is what they're going to say. They're going to go, they gonna go. Sherry, why you irritate Kim so much? Why you make yep. her go there? Yeah. Andrea says, Sherry <laughs> looks so say. innocent. They're going to say, Sherry, why you, why you even go there? Why you get Kim's blood sugar? Ooh, when I tell you that banana, that orange, huh? That banana and that orange saved me. I was going down. You know, uh, your blood sugar being low means that you haven't been drinking your water, and you're not you're not eating um, enough because your blood sugar should not be down so low. But that's good that you had an orange and a banana because that's a lot of it's sugar and potassium, so that's really good. Okay, okay so I'm glad better. that you feel better. Drink. Hydrate. Uh, okay, I, got, I, got, you know, I got some old water. I don't even know. This could be Joshua water. It's been sitting on my desk. Who knows? Have you but when you get some water, send you some more. You know pins. what? If I have my own talk show, I can afford that water. I can't keep ordering that water, Sherry. <laughs> I'm going to buy you some water. 
Okay, good old Ralphs. Right here. Good old Ralphs. Pack 93 says, Innocent My Foot. Uh, MS Thomas says, Kim is right. <laughs> Ruby Red, Sherry, you're a sweetheart and gives you all the flowers. Thank you. I'm not I'm not arguing with these people. <laughs> Ver, Vernique, Vernique, hey, Miss Sherry, we love you all the way from the Bahamas. We have a oh, pro man. Sherry crowd. Well, that's not because everybody gets on me for him. I, I took it. I, I read the comments uh, last week's podcast. When I saw people, people got in my ass because they were just really. Because upset. they couldn't get in your titties because <laughs> they're not there no more. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. Stacy Grove. That's what I happens when you, eat, when you eat one banana, Kim. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Funny Mamas. I'm Sherry Shepard. And this is Kim you're Whitley. Not, you're not doing that. You, you know we're a lot. I'm Kim Whitley. We did this 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago. Stop it. You're going to make me start rocking. I'm going to start rocking. And you already know we got a special guest today. I can't do this with you. You already know I'm missing so, Joshua's game. It's a lot going on. You cannot do this to Kim. me. We just started the podcast. We started the podcast 15 minutes ago, but you were so busy looking at yourself. You was looking at yourself and all, oh, I'm perfect. Nobody looks at themselves. When you ain't got no makeup and no hair on, you don't never look at yourself like that. What was in that orange? Okay. I don't know what, I what was in it. It's, she's she's like a kid on sugar. But you did state something that I thought is very important before we get to our guests. Uh, you said you miss, you're missing Joshua's game to do the podcast. And you have to go out of town because you're going to be at Delaware. At Where are you going to be tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to be at the Wilmington Library. Me, Kim Coles, Kim Fields, and Kim Wayans. It is going to be a fantastic night. It's a free event. So you can come to the Wilmington, uh, Delaware Library, and we will be there. We're going to do book signings and chats. It looked like a comedy it's the, show. It looks, it's called the Kims of Comedy. So this is great because Kim Whitley, Kim Coles, Kim Fields, and Kim Wayne. So, you know, Kim is, she has to do the podcast. We committed to doing the podcast, so she's missing Joshua's game. And then uh, Saturday, we are at the Bethesda Theater in Bethesda, Maryland. And this is a really important part. It's, it's crazy because we're actors. And you're on strike as an actor, so you're not working. The, the good thing about what we do is when traditional work does not come in, you can go on the road and do stand-up. So if you go to Kim's um, IG page, she's got a whole tour, comedy tour that she's doing. You are a single mom, so you're taking care of Joshua. So you have to make certain sacrifices. This is Kim's tour. Go to her IG page, get tickets, support her. Because literally, Kim is a one-man show. And because these actors, you you know, actors have been on strike for, gosh, the past few months. And it's been really rough out here. So a lot of sacrifices you have had to make. And I was just thinking about it because I talked about it this morning, watching Garcelle Bouvet on Real Housewives of... Um, Beverly Hills, Kim, she mm -hmm. talked about the fact her sons told her, I don't remember if it was Jax or Jade, but she mm -hmm. was, took them to eat and she just kind of asked, how, how are we doing? Where are we at? Just like a check-in. And her son told her, all of the stuff you're telling me now, you should have been telling me two years ago. He said, because you don't spend a, a, enough time with, with the family. And it really took Garcella back. And she said, wait a minute. He said, you were, you be, you're gone all the time. And she said, I was only gone for four months. And she said, I'm always with you. And he was like, well, I basically raised myself. I've been doing stuff myself. I'm, you, you know, and, and I had to, she was so emotional. I'm, ta I'm, I'm you know, taking notes. No, you don't have to take right. notes of a teenager talking out the side of his ass. You, that you don't have to take <laughs> notes about. But I, I, I frequently, you get that from Joshua. I get that from Jeffrey. We are all, Garcelle gets it from the twins. We are all single mothers having to make these sacrifices to, you know, two funny mamas. We do two funny mamas, not only because we love our uh, fans and our subscribers, but two funny mamas, we've built it up to a place. We do advertising. We get a little bit of funds from it and we use it to pay bills. And so, um, uh, but, and we also give back to the community. We want people to learn, and, laugh, and, and, and we started and, it for that. We, it's definitely, we have a charity component aspect of Two Funny Mamas, but sometimes it requires these sacrifices because we don't have somebody else in here helping. And so 
I, I feel bad because I know you want to be a Joshua's game. You are one of those people when you make a commitment, you make a commitment. And you got to be out of here at 8 o'clock because your plane leaves at 10 o'clock tonight. So, Girl, and I just I got to pack Sherry Smith. You Girl, still got to pack. Stuff. I, I got a package to send you. I was like, why am I putting this in the mail? I forgot I'm going to see you this weekend. We're seeing each other this weekend. But can you speak to that? Do you? Because I know you feel mother guilt. I feel mother guilt. Like, but you still, we still have to you keep know going. What? And then you're going to have to. Yeah, I think it's the check in. I think that's what's important. Uh, when Joshua really says, you know, and you're always leaving, it's always when he wants something. It's always when I say, read that book. I can't read the book because you're leaving. Yes, it's always that. But I have been fortunate that I have a, a nanny and a nanny family. That's what I like to call her. He's really too old to have a nanny. But this young lady named Stephanie Proctor out of Detroit, she's been taking care of him since he was three. But this is what the blessing is. Her whole family takes care of him. She used to come to my house in the beginning, but now he goes to her house because he's become friends. Uncle Steve, that's her daddy, her mama, Miss Linda, and her, her sisters. So Joshua goes into a family situation, which helps him not miss me. He got a daddy there, well, grandma, or granddad, really. And um, they take him with them and they've been loving on him. So I am lucky, uh, which helps me. But I will speak about the guilt. The guilt is every time we go out of town, we bring them a little gift back. Like, oh, you know, we want to, and we're checking in. You saw me, you helped me years ago. Uh, we were at a comedy show and Joshua was losing his mind. I was, And you were like, just read with him. I was like, on FaceTime, just sit there and read with him? I was like, we, I thought he was going to the after party. You looked at me like I was crazy. You said, get on that FaceTime and read with him. And it made a difference. And as mothers, I, and I remember Terrence Howard and Miguel Nunez told me, they said, Kim, it's going to always be different from you. He said, we're on a show right now, all of us. He said, you and Robin Gibbons can't have babies. He said, we can have a family and build a family. He said, you have to time it. You That's when you guys do were doing the sitcom. I'm going to interrupt for a second. That's when uh -huh. you were doing the sitcom with Robin Gibbons and Terrence Howard called Sparks and Sparks. Keep going. Yeah. No, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. We talk about this all the time. And, and with Garcelle, I think it is when you check in and it, it is having fun. It is just like a man. You've got to plan date night. And like you got to plan something with your kids that we're going to go to San Diego for the weekend or whatever you want to do to spend some time with the kids without a boyfriend, without someone else. It's really just spending time with your kid. It's something you have to carve out just like we carve out everything else. You know what I want to say? It's, you know, Jeffrey, when he was younger, it was harder for me because Jeffrey would like untie my shoes so I couldn't leave. And he would, he would send pictures on his phone of him crying and they would call me. When I had to do, I was going through my divorce and I had, I did Soul Man with Cedric the Entertainer and Niecy Nash. So I had to fly back and forth from New York to LA because I wasn't working. I, had well, I remember from that. And, I, and it was like, and I turned down being a regular on Soul Man because I was like, I can't afford to be there every week and what y'all need from me. So Cedric so graciously allowed me to come in for like the table read, a one rehearsal and we shot instead of having to be there five days. And then I got to go back home. And I think at the same time I was doing a Tom Jordan morning show uh, where I had to be there at three in the morning. I was not getting any sleep. Plus they were calling me with her, Jeffrey's crying. He's having a meltdown. I felt, I remember falling on the floor crying, going, Lord, I got to take care of my family. And I got these lawyers, like, and I'm missing Jeffrey's moments. It, you know, God got me through and he gave me a village of people that would, you know, take on Jeffrey. One group was the Mocha Moms. The, uh, the I just the joined. Moms. You know, I just joined last week. All these years. You never said, told me. Know. But you never told Why me. Why did you do because, you know, I feel like for me, and I love the Mocha Moms, but for you, I feel like, why did you join the Mocha Moms? You are, Mocha Moms to me is, it's a community oh, of women. Saying. Like if I, when I came back to LA, I didn't need to join the Mocha Moms because I had my village already. I had all of y'all to help me with Jeffrey. I didn't need 
a, a group that I needed to pour into and I needed, needed them to pour into me because I had so many friends. So that's the only reason I, I, I love the Mocha Moms. Um, I feel like, honestly, for me, I feel like you joining the Mocha Moms, you, you're overextending yourself because you have so much going on. You, to pour into another organization, like you don't need them to pour into your life because you have a cavalcade of people to that are pouring into your life right now. So that's the only thing, and nothing against the moms. I love them. I needed them. There was a season where I needed, I still am in touch with my mochas. But I think that we as single moms need to find that village. And you have to be part of the village because they're gonna need you. Right now, yeah, when I go out of town with Jeffrey, Jeffrey literally is like, okay, bye, whatever, and I'm back. You know, but you're right. You have to plan things with them. So like on Saturdays, Jeffrey and I, we have a breakfast mm -hmm. date. We go to a diner. We get on the train. We go to you a do diner. You do that, yes. We go to the train. We always get lost because I'll be trying to show them how to take the train. And it's always like, the D train has been canceled. You are going on, get on the Times Square, 42nd Street. Get on the D train. Get on the F train. F train. Take it. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> so, but Saturday and Sundays, we go to the diner, just him and I. Sometimes we go on dinner dates. Sometimes we go to the movies. You have to make a, a special effort to just have some alone time. So that's why I told Garcelle and I said, also teenagers, just sometimes it's the hormones. They be going off sometimes. Half the time they don't even want you around them, but they want you there. It's like, I want you here close, but I don't want you near me. So I just thought it was interesting. I'm sorry that you're missing no, I'm glad you missed No, I'm glad you Yeah. But you know what? I'm, know I'm glad what you brought up was a village and we have someone who's actually part of my village in a way yes. with us today and um i just sent her a uh okay lord well, I, we were talking oops, about sorry. our next guest. Thing. no i would have messed up because i tried to send something to ariva oh lord i sent it to some not, her driver i mean not her on. driver oh uh, this okay, okay. All right. All right. let's this bring her Chris, oh, don't introduce it, Reba. Hey, uh, let Reba. me let me hold on. Calm down. You got so much going on. I just wanted to intro why we have Ariva on. Kim and I were talking about. I'm gonna get it. Kim and I were talking about last week. I don't. Somebody passed in our circle, and we were talking about yes. arrangements. Um, it's very hard to talk about death and talk about the fact that at some point we will be going. But the problem comes in is if you don't talk about it now and get things together, then it makes it so much harder for people because some death and divorce make people crazy. I don't know what it is that when people get divorced, all, it, the craziness comes out because we are also talking about prenuptial agreements and death. The family members start fighting and we were talking because in my family, when my mom passed away, my grandmother, my mother's uh, mother-in-law, my grandmother on my dad's side, and my aunt on my mom's side, her sister, those were my two favorite people in the world. They got into it. Like, I don't know what it was. My auntie was going through my mom's stuff, looking for an insurance policy to see if we could pay some of these funeral expenses. My grandmother saw it, and she immediately thought my auntie was trying to get the money and not tell nobody. And when I tell you, Kim, the fight that exploded. My grandmother was like, you never was. I never could trust you. That's why you always come around my husband. And then my auntie was like, you old bitch. I don't want to be around your old husband. And that's why you're not sleeping with him. And I was like, auntie, grandmother. When I tell you, they almost got into a physical fight. And I had to separate them. And my auntie says, I can't be around this woman. I never liked you. My my sister never liked you. And my grandmother was like, well, I never liked you. It was horrible. And this is all from my mother's dying. And, so, and she had, yeah. she had okay. nothing. I was going to say, is what I'm you saying. already know my story. But you already you know my story with my brother. I already told you that story. I can't tell that. But well, can you, you is know. it something you can tell our, our fans, the story? Yeah, but it's just like you said in death, you know, somebody didn't change the wheel. I thought I was gonna get the artwork. Scott was teasing me. I jumped on him. Scott said he didn't know I was that strong. Uh <laughs> then he said my So you jumped on him and you tried to do what? Y'all got into a fight. 
okay, there was a statue, you know, that we brought back from Africa when we was little, and it was on the floor. And I went for the statue to, to hit him in the head. Just and my, that, I'm talking about in death. And my, um, my mother and my aunt jumped on my back. Scott said, I flicked them off like flies. He, when Scott tells the story, it's the funniest thing. I was trying to get him choking my mother and my aunt. And they said, that, I did like Scott said, I did like this. It was that adrenaline. The next day, my mother had bruises. It was horrible when I look back on it. And uh, then my my mother started screaming, William, William. And that's, that's my, dad. my dad, my daddy. And he said he was downstairs and he heard the cry. He said, oh, who done died now? Because he didn't want to come upstairs. So he comes upstairs. Now, the door is cracked like this much, right? This is what the crazy part is. He kicks in the door. My brother said, you know, the one of them old back in the day, Mod Squad Shaft, God rest his soul. He said he comes and he kicks the door open and he did. He said he assessed the situation and he saw it was me. And my mother, my father throws me on the bed. And this is the crazy thing. This cracked everybody up. We were done because I was in this play on the road and uh, I played uh, Mercedes, Laquisha, whatever I was. And my father was like, you're becoming your character. <laughs> Yeah. When I tell that you, everybody. and it's it was this was the death <laughs> of your aunt who had promised you her artwork, and Scott was teasing you. It wasn't the right moment, but it's like something about death gets family worked up, and we started talking about you and I about we our funeral arrangements, how we wanted our funeral arrangements, because it's even something that you think is so little that could be a big thing, and I said. For my funeral arrangements, I know usually that somebody in my family is going to take over and I need a whole, I want my funeral to be all pomp yes. and circumstance. Like I want an eight by 10. Yeah, uh, you, you want a lot. Would have never guessed. I, well, you know what? I, this is why I'm doing this gig in Bethesda because that's my funeral arrangement stuff. I want a whole full color brochure, color photos. I want people, I want tributes. I want this, I didn't froze up. It, oh my gosh. Should my frozen. So I want tributes in the in the brochure. I need people. I need you, Kim, to be handling the people who get up and speak. Because it's gonna be a lot of people want to get up and speak and and say stuff. And I want people to only be able to speak for five minutes because it's gonna be so many people. If they're comments, ain't nobody gonna do that. Five minutes is too long. Two minutes because they're gonna take. Nobody's got two minutes. Okay, when Niecy Nash gets up to speak, how long you think she gonna do? 15. Do you have a 15 to 20? Do you have a phone? Nisi fund? Nash is going to do 40 minutes. I'm telling you this right now. Somebody's going to have to put the lock on Nisi Nash. Nisi Nash is going to get up there and fall out, moaning, gnashing, and wailing. She going to sing. She going to use her whole name, Carol. Carol and Nash. She going to have 90 million. Uh, stories about Sherry and me. Then she going to cry again. Then Jessica going to have to get her because she followed. Nisi going to upstage me at my funeral. I already know this. So I need somebody to put the kibosh on Nisi Nash. And I need you to do that, Kim, because Nisi, Nisi love me, but Nisi going to upstage my, me at my funeral. They're going to forget about me and be on Nisi. So, but I need That's people true. to speak. I want Donnie McClurkin to sing. I want Kirk Franklin to sing. I need Tamla Mann. I need people to be in tears over the fact that you they want, are losing oh, me. You I need Donnie, yeah, so Donnie McClurkin. Well, Donnie take Clark, a note. I need a whole celebrity section because my sister is not impressed with celebrities. So let's say Whoopi Goldberg is late. She going to tell Whoopi, there's no more room in the church. And Whoopi going to be like, I didn't flown all the way out here. And my sister's going to be like, I don't care who you are. There's no more room in the church. No, no, can't no, let you no, no, no. If it's, if it's in LA, Whoopi going to be like, I done took the bus across country. <laughs> She'll be no. She will. And like, because my sister is not into celebrities, like she won't know who to let in. Like I want a red carpet for the celebrities got to feel like, you know, they're seen. So I need a red carpet and I need a whole section, half of the church in the front to be, to be, you know, Lonnie Love going to have some big sunglasses on, you know, I need them to be seen. So I need a whole celebrity okay. section. I need my publicist and you and John Murray to get the celebrities together so that people okay. who know them, they can go, go, go you ain't got to stand in line. Come on, come on up, Trevor Noah. You, you going to sit in the front. I need, I need when people what about walk in. All, what, well, what section should we put all the dudes you slept with? Like where, where should that, that's going to be a huge section. I don't know. I just need to. Are you know talking about your funeral or mine going to be a huge section? 
your section gonna be your bigger than mine. No, no, no. Your yeah, section gonna be big. Whatever. Your section gonna be big. My section. I, not gonna be big. I have an idea. What if you I'm arranged it? Balcony. What if you arranged it Put through your balcony. will? Yes, I know that. That's what I'm saying. He's trying. So this is yeah, why he's trying to bring this on the guests. He's trying to bring on. I know what he's trying to do. What do you want? Look at her face! Oh my god! Uh uh! Did you do the hand thing? All right, Queen Charlotte. Okay, that was funny. All right, y'all. Because now you got to add. I I was worried really where where Kim was going to go with uh, the section for for Sherry's exes started in the balcony. No, the exes. Oh no! They can't come. What? The one can. His daddy can come, but he got to be in the back. The rest, nobody else can. Nobody else, because otherwise that second one come, he going to serve me with a subpoena. He going to throw it in my coffin. We oh, not no. having that. Oh, no. no, sir. He going to come and throw the subpoena, hit me on the chest, and I can't move to scream at him. No, no, he's not invited. Oh, God. Well, to but protect you. But you get two huh? men that I really loved, and you know who they are, Kim? Put them up in front. You know, I know. Anyway, so this is why this I'm, is why we I'm were talking. I'm gonna lick their neck first and pass on my number. I'm be like, she gone, but I'm still here. Mm. Okay, sorry. Mm. But ahead. we were talking about a revo. This was the discussion that we had, y'all, about you gotta get you you need to put that in your in your estate planning so that there will be no confusion when people find that Kim stole everything from my house during my garage sale, all of the jewelry. You need to put that in your will where it's I'm leaving Kim a bunch of stuff. So it's just like they you we don't like to talk you. about it, but once you do it, it's done. We also talked about prenups and why prenups were important. So we decided to bring on Ariva Martin, who is just She's a special needs attorney. Her and Kim, she's the founder of the Special Needs Network, an Network amazing, a amazing civil friend. rights attorney. And, and mm-hmm. award winning civil Senior. rights attorney. You've seen her on USA Today and Wall Street Journal. She's a best selling author, radio talk show host, and producer, in demand keynote speaker, accomplished nonprofit leader. You mentioned Special Needs Network. She was just at the sneaker ball with our lovely. Kim Whitley, among others. Ariva Martin, everybody. Follow her on Instagram at Ariva Martin. Hello, Ariva. Backing up at Sherry's demand, her wish list for her funeral, because I have a wish list and mine is just so opposite. Sherry wants pomp and circumstance and red carpets and celebrities. And my big wish is I tell my kids, close my coffin because I don't want anybody looking down at me and just have this most beautiful big picture of me and just let them look at the picture. But Sherry, you are so right. All of those little like details that you want, you better write that down. You better make sure that the person who you leave in charge of that is going to honor those wishes because oftentimes people write down what they want and some family member says, they don't need all of that. I'm not putting all that money in the grave. They're dead. They're not going to know if you know, we spend $50,000 versus $5,000. So you got to find that trusted person that you want to be the executor of your estate to make sure they are going to follow your wishes because you got a serious wish list, girl. And you got to and you got to know, this is what I want to ask Ariva. And Ariva, thank you so much for coming on. Mm-hmm. And anybody who is watching Two Funny Mamas Live, if you have any questions, type them in and we'll give Chris a chance to read the questions to give to Ariva. Now, Ariva can't go into detail about stuff. You know, we take taking a, a lot of her time and her time is worth a lot. But, you know, she can answer basic questions for you about prenuptial agreements and, you know, estate planning. We always hear about, like, Aretha Franklin. They couldn't find a will. They found an old one with taco sauce on it, another one underneath the couch. Prince didn't leave, if I'm not mistaken. Prince never left any kind of estate. So his, I don't even know if he got along with his sister who took over. Uh, a John Singleton, when he passed, he had a will, but that was before he had another seven kids. We hear about all the time. Yes, Kim, he had other children, but he only left, his will was made when he only had one child. So people don't update, people don't leave uh, estates. And I think a lot of people think, well, I ain't got nothing. Why should I have? Can you explain why you need even a will, estate, anything? Yeah, first of all, everything you just said is true, Sherry. There are two things I think that make people nervous. Some people are superstitious 
And they think if I sit down and do my estate planning and write out my will, somehow that means I'm going to die. And so they associate <laughs> estate planning with death and they're afraid of it. And then other people, like you said, say, well, I don't have anything. What's the big deal? And in both cases, you are wrong. In both cases, you are wrong. If you live in Los Angeles and you have a house, even in what may be considered the hood, the ghetto, whatever you want to call it, that house could be worth a million dollars. And if your parents bought that house 20, 30 years ago, you may be sitting on eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars of equity. And guess what? You got almost a million dollars. So you have a lot. And talking about your estate and planning it is not going to make you die. <laughs> that is just an urban myth. You are not going to die because you plan. And it is the best gift that you can give your family because as both of you said, if you die without a will and no instructions, your family, if it's a dollar or if it's a hundred million dollars, they are going to be fighting over it. I don't care. I've seen people fight over, uh, Kim said, uh, you know, artwork, people will fight over dishes. They fight over old raggedy cars and coats. And I mean, just the, the most unimaginable things, people will find some kind of way to fight over it. So make it easy on your family. If you love them and you really want this to be a moment where they're celebrating your legacy rather than one half of the family is on this side of the church because they ain't talking to the other half of the family that's on the other side of the church. And you know, sometimes people go and get a restraining order where people can't even come to the funeral. They've been Kim, fighting so much. So Ariva, Kim still has the restraining order that Scott put on Kim is still in effect. Okay. Ariva, don't, <laughs> don't I've seen it don't all. Listen. So yes, Cherry, you need a will because you will just make life easier for your family. And it's just a set of instructions about what you want to happen with your stuff. And if you work What if you just write you something down? Do you have mm -hmm. to have an attorney? What if I just write down on this yellow pad, I'm going to write down what I want, who going to do it, why can't okay. this be it? No, because the, because wills are legal documents. And for them to have the weight that they need to have, they have to follow certain rules that have been set up by the state that you live in. So if you don't have the money to hire a lawyer, there are lots of lawyers that won't call, you know, charge you a fortune, but you can go online. There are some online legal services that you can go on and, and do your will there. And a lot of people have prepaid legal with your health insurance. You might have a prepaid legal service. So make sure you check that out as well, because you may be able to access uh, an estate lawyer using your prepaid legal services. So there are lots of low cost ways. And if you got money, for a wee, if you got money to get your nails done two or three times a month, you can set aside some money. It's, you know, you got money for hair, set aside a little money and do your will. You're gonna make life so much easier for your family and your loved ones. Um, you know, I, I've heard about like, uh, especially like me, I have a, a, a son who has special needs mm -hmm. and I was advised to do like, literally do a trust that anything that i am making my insurance policies all of that needs to go into another state because right. you know charge taxes why do we have a dog interrupting a really great conversation you see you see you see Ariva? but you already noticed Ariva. i've had the dog experience so i'm good i'm good with the dog experience <laughs> but you know, can you explain to people why they need to do estate planning if they have children? Yeah, really important. You have a special needs son. I have a special needs son and I we have a trust. You have a trust. Trusts are different than wills. Wills are a legal document that controls what happens to your stuff after you die. So in a will, it's about you're dead. You got a house. You're leaving it to you know someone. You have jewelry. You have a shoe collection. I have an aunt saying Louis who has literally like a thousand pair of designer shoes. Mm -hmm. She needs to put it in the will because the family's going to go crazy fighting over those shoes. Even the people that can't wear her shoes are going to be fighting over these shoes. So what about you your airline miles? Uh, airline well, miles. You know, airlines may have some rules about whether you can pass those on or not. But anything, sit down and write down everything you have that you think somebody may want even the stuff that you think somebody may not want because it may not be that important to you but there may be some relative that says oh every time i see auntie kim with that purse i wish i had it and you right. you know this favorite niece you may want her to have the purse, so you need to put that in the will too so wills are controlling those assets that you have after your death trust 
you can transfer things into a trust while you are living and that trust those assets can be used while you are living and that's a good way to provide for a special needs child because maybe they're not going to work right and earn a complete living enough to you know rent an apartment and live independently and you want to give them some money every month you can do that out of a trust uh, the other reason that people use trust is maybe a way to protect their assets from creditors so let's say you get sued Sherry, you got this big time show and uh, you know, you're out and I don't know, something happens in a restaurant, you get mad at somebody, you throw some water on them or something. And they're like, oh, that's Sherry Shepard. I'm gonna sue her uh, thinking, oh, deep pockets, right? She has all these assets, but if they're in a trust, the trust can provide some protection against your creditors coming after you. So uh, as you start to accumulate a little something, something, a trust may be a, a better way to protect your assets than uh, a will. And also trust, you don't have probate. Uh, you don't have to probate a trust the way you have to do a will. And probate just means you have to go and go through some legal stuff at a court. And there can be a lot of fees associated with probating a will that you don't incur if you have your assets in a trust. So if you have a little something of value, it's probably worth, again, talking to an estate lawyer, finding out if they recommend that you set up a trust versus a will. Uh, and keeping it current, you, you raise a good point, Sherry. So here's John Singleton. He files, he does his estate planning with one child. That happens a lot when people get married, right? You're married to ex to you know partner number one, and then that's divorce happens, and now you got another wife or a second, third partner, and you don't update. And then you know what happens when you dead? Oh my God, those three women. I don't know what was that movie with uh, uh, Lorenz Tate. Uh, Frankie Lyman. Movie. Yes, yes, Frankie Lyman, great example. All those women fighting over his stuff because he had all kinds of legal stuff and none of it was really up to date and current. So very important that uh, once you create your estate that you keep it updated as you have major changes in your life. New kids, new husbands, you know, you want to take somebody out of your will, right? There may be people you fall out with. You don't want them to get anything. So Right. But how do, like how do people change the will? I, I see a lot of times we hear they somebody died, then all of a sudden, like, well, how they get it? I know they didn't want her to have it. How do you change a will? Or you know, I'm not gonna name names, but a lot of this stuff happens. Oh yeah, you can change a will. Uh you literally could go in a, at any point and decide that you're going to disinherit someone and even a relative or even a child or a well, spouse. Well, no, 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 no. I guess what I'm saying is how does somebody else change your will? Like you oh, hear oh, a person. person. Oh, right, like someone so else changed the will. Somebody can't change yes. your will. You have to be of sound mind and body to change your own will, which is another reason why, back to your point, Sherry, black people don't wait till you're on your deathbed. Because if you're unconscious or if you are not in the right frame of mind, I can't come to the side of your bed and write your will. You have to be in the right frame of mind because that will can be challenged. And that happens to a lot of people. Uh, you know, the sister is getting everything and the brother's like, uh-uh, that's fraud. Uh-uh, mama wasn't even in the right frame of mind when she you, you had her sign this will. So you want to be at your best when you are taking care of this kind of business because this is important. So don't be on your desk. And I dying. guess, uh, Ariva, we're going to have you back at a, on a different part to talk about prenups because yeah. everything gets, cause we, we know we're taking so much of your time and thank you. But I know that it's also important in a will who you designate. I don't know if you have an executor when you do your will or is your trust. Yeah. Like you want to make sure this is a person who's, go like you do have people in your family who will say, I know I do. Who will say, I'm not spending all that money on no daggone funeral. Sherry gone. She don't, we, they don't need no full color brochure. That's dumb. I'm not doing that. No, uh -uh, right. no. I have family members who are like that. When I didn't told them, no, I'm, I got money set aside for a party. Yes. So it, it really is important yes. who you Yes, choose your executor wisely. <laughs> yes. And you have to have multiple people because you talked about Kim. You know, we don't know what the good Lord has in store and who's going to go first, right? So you have to also think about the age of the person that you are designating as your executor. It doesn't, you know, automatically mean because the person's 20 years younger than you that they're going to be around, mm -hmm. but 
uh, typically you have multiple people and if that person, the number one person becomes incapacitated or something happens to them and they're no longer with us, then you have person number two. But make sure this is, again, a person you can trust and somebody that's good with money. Not, you know, because if you're leaving a lot of money, particularly like you sure you have your son, Kim, you have your son. You want somebody that you can trust that's going to be a good steward, right, of that money and not going to run through it because if the money is to help supplement the income for your special needs child, you don't want somebody out there like, you know, buying No, cars. that's true. If you're going to get a, if you're going to get a Tesla while my son in the back room. Right, are they on you a know, Bahamas vacation? <laughs> that would be me. Right, we have some questions in the live chat. I know, Chris, can okay. you pop them up to Ariva? Yeah, how about this from Cindy Harris? How do you word your trust and or will that under no circumstances a family member inherits anything from you at all? I like this. Damn. I like her. This is it. Uh, we got a few more, too, plain. if you want them. Make that plain. And, yes, there are some family members that you are going to say that even though they are related, you don't want. I, I, I was helping a, a client because something very similar happened to them. They had uh, moved in to take care of an elderly person and the elderly person had a son, but the son would never come visit them, wouldn't do anything. So the dad disinherited the son. And of course, dad dies. And now the person, the caregiver has property and money and everything. And here comes the son. And the will was very clear that he did not want his son to collect anything. But they ended up in court because the son, you know, said that this was undue influence and that this caregiver had pressured the dad. So uh, it can get messy, unfortunately, but be as clear, crystal clear as you can be about who you want to get your stuff and who you do not want to get anything from you. Man, that's, what, that's why you put a video with it and you do like this. Uh, you know I'm talking about you, boy. Boy, I ain't seen you don't you. You ain't contesting. Wait, no, you, you ain't even do come over here. This, this lady been over here wiping my ass for no. months. You ain't came over hey, here. I'm not doing that. But Maria, yeah. if Kim does, if Kim does do something like that, like she, it has to be. She has to say this is Kim Whitley specifically on this date, and you, like, you got to seal it and get it notarized. <laughs> like, you can't just yes. be putting out no yes. cell phone video. No, ladies, you, you were so ladies in court. And, and be like, look at the judge and say, judge, you better not. What'd you say, Reba? I'm advising that we set aside a little money and you go into an attorney's office and you videotape that and, and you have it authenticated and follow all the rules of your state to make sure that video uh, is not going to be challenged in court as well. So, but I love that idea. And then that's kind of creepy, though. Remember, you're dead now, and then your lawyer calls in everybody, and they're sitting around a, a big conference table, and bam, who you come with this because video? Because Ariva, it is very creepy if we got to sit around a conference table, and then all of a sudden Kim come up going, listen, listen. All your little family members, all your little friends, you think you're going to get my money? You know, that's just, that's creepy. So we do it's need creepy, you, Kim. But, uh... <laughs> Oh, let me we tell you something. You need to send a lawyer's office to sit still oh. and read it's from a not script. It's just the money. And uh, there's a great book out by a rabbi talking about leaving wisdom, like all the things you want to like impart to your children and to your family members about life and things oh. that you've learned. That's also another thing you know people don't often think about. But look, after you live to be 70, 80, 90 years old, you got a lot of wisdom. So think about writing down those things that can help the next generation. Let well, me tell you good. something. If my uncle, you are not quiet on uncle, me. Like, we just talk about the money. <laughs> if my uncle, if we sitting around, my uncle, he, he got a few things. If he only leave me some wisdom, but he leave my cousin Sandra some money, I'm gonna be mad. <gasps> okay, put the wisdom with the money. But just for, for yeah, everybody. You want your son to know, like you know. I, how you would like him to remember you by just things to think about in it now you're right people are there for the money but you know they'll, they'll take the wisdom with the, the jewelry with the money the cash oh lord let's see uh, what other questions why, do we have why is joshua calling me huh? hey joshua he's like i've got the notary with me we're making some updates he's probably at a game. Oh, poor baby. well we, we do have to so wait much. i want to 
I want to remind everybody, follow Ariva on Instagram, at Ariva Martin. Very simple to find that. And uh, I've got a quick question from Ruby Red. How much should the average will or estate planning cost if you hire an attorney? I live in California. Thank you. Hire an attorney outside of California? I believe she lives in California. She wants to know how much it would cost. California. You know, it depends on the size of your estate. So if you got a simple estate and not a whole lot, you know, maybe you're going to pay $2,500 in California. But if you got businesses and you got property and you got stocks and bonds and 401k plans, you got this really complex estate, you're going to pay a lot. You know, you're going to pay a lot more money, uh, you know, depending on how complex your your estate and your assets are. And don't, you know, you don't want to go cheap with something like this. Again, particularly if you're leaving stuff to children or family members, you, you want to make sure it's right. You don't want folks embroiled in long, expensive legal battles. Uh, you want people to have fond memories of you, not, you know, oh, mama just messed this up. We, get, we couldn't find the will, couldn't find her insurance, but you know, people will talk about you too when you did. So keep that in mind. Yeah, you know, Ariva, you're so right because my mother, uh, like I said, her, my auntie and my grandmother almost got into a physical fight. She didn't leave a will. She, my mother was the type, she hid insurance policies around the house. I don't know what was going on with my mother. I love her, but we found more insurance policies and it's probably something we didn't even know about because she didn't have them in a safe deposit box. There was nobody that she told you know we didn't expect her to go but there was nobody that she told there's got to be somebody you tell hey like yeah. i tell kim kim and i got this agreement if something happened to either one of us you fly out and you get that brown boxes under the bed they got the lock and the batteries that come with it that's what kim told me i told kim something happened to me there's a box up in the closet go get it there's all my papers are in that box so you yes. gotta tell people what you, what you said you didn't oh. say nothing about no papers Oh. You didn't say nothing about no. That's what you don't say. They papers, okay. That's good That's advice, good. Jerry. You gotta tell somebody because when you die, people come to your house. They can't find stuff, and you know, kid, if you worked hard in the bank accounts, you got bank accounts, you got cars in your name. Nobody can touch any of that stuff. If you have not taken care of your estate, literally, they can't go into your bank accounts. So you gotta handle your business. You you, you do again. You don't want to have about, the bank. That money could end up it, at the state. What, what what? Okay, I got a list in my uh, trust in my will. On the first page, it says uh, money people owe me, and I got people's <laughs> name and the amount. Oh no, you go get that money. Just because I'm gone don't mean it's not mine. That money belonged to my son. Matter of fact, I'm sending you the list too, Sherry, because you're going to look at the people and be like, uh, did you ever pay Kim back that money? Ariva. She gone. Uh, she Ariva. Got, you got I had one party. That's the line that Denzel says in that movie. He's like, I'm going to get that money. <laughs> Ariva, I had one party at Kim's house, and she still charged me the money for the tennis court's lights. You know how Kim is about them tennis, them lights on her tennis court. And I just Ariva know paid her bill. Her. Ariva I paid did. her bill. Let me see. You did, Ariva? Uh -huh. You paid for the, the lights on the tennis court? We had to pay in advance. Mm -hmm. Kim made you we pay in advance? You weren't allowed on the estate without paying in advance. Oh so ain't that about Let me tell you something. I will pay Joshua. I will gladly pay Joshua. Uh, the money I owe for them lights on the tennis court for having a skate party got because I was leaving town. I will I will do that. But you know, it's just oh, do we have any more questions? Because I we have I so many great questions, and Ariva is okay. doing a wonderful job. Everybody's really enjoying that. Uh, also, it was pointed out that Kim did put up the church finger uh, as she walked away off camera. So shout out to I believe it's Darletha <laughs> that said that I could be wrong. Uh, real questions. Uh, Odessa, if parents are deceased and sibling was left as an executor, if executor passes, can the executor put a will in place for the estate? No, the executor, if the executor dies again, that gets really complicated. If there's not a successor to that executor, which is why you should have multiple people who are listed. Uh, so that executor can appoint some other people like in the, you know, in the event that I die, uh, you know, they can give that responsibility 
to someone else. But again, you want to do that yourself because how do you know that person that is chosen? And again, if their siblings involved, they can contest it. That's the thing with everything, whatever you do, keep in mind that I'm if somebody doesn't that. like, doesn't mean they're going to win. But in that case, imagine that the executor says, I want my son to be in charge. And then there's another sibling or someone who says, oh, no, her son has, you know, been to jail and, you know, he stole money from mama. I don't want him touching mama's money. Somebody's going to end up, you know, contesting you that know, decision. Wait, I, I wanted to add on to that. What I had to do with mine is because everybody in my family is older. And so after I ran out of, after about two executors i was like everybody else is too you know kim got a bad back her legs be hurting mm -hmm. she can't she can't handle jeffrey <laughs> so <laughs> you know what i had to do was i had to make a bank i had to choose a bank that has been established for a long time i didn't just choose the 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 people bank of america because i ain't never heard of them before i chose right. a bank that has been around a long time that had a good s p rating that you know um, mm -hmm. And I chose to have a bank. If my executors passed away, the bank takes over with issuing yes. funds for Jeffrey to live. Have, so that so makes those, awesome are, yeah, those are really good choices. I, you know, sometimes yeah. people try to law firm, tell me that. Uh, that was a good one. firm. So there are professionals who can serve as your executor, and you never have to worry about people dying because the bank is always going Hold to up, have Wait a minute. I feel some kind of way about this because, okay, there's two things I got to say. No, I got three things to say quickly. My friend just texted me, Melvin King, the pastor. He said, I'm, I'm leaving a will today to leave you all my debt. Can you leave somebody your debt? Pastor. No. Pastor. No, oh, pastor. Okay, wait. My second question is, can people, I don't know if I believe in that. Remember, Sherry, I told you? I looked at my will and testament what I got to change right now, and there's names on there I ain't never heard of. My business managers put people in place on this wheel in my trust, and I was like, I, I don't, I don't know these people. So maybe it's the accountant is this and that. So maybe he did do that. But matter of fact, what did you, like, read it? Wait, Ariva, Ariva, did you sign it? it? What did you say, Ariva? Read your document. Because don't oh, just, get, even if you get a lawyer or a manager, you got to know what it says because you may not agree with it. And yeah, you may not agree those people anymore. Huh? Ariva, how long you done known Kim? This is why I own 51% of Two about Funny to, Mamas. About to and say I that. gave her the contract. She complained all the time. I said, Kim, did you read the contract? I told you to read it. She goes, you know I don't be reading them things. You know our friend. We we need to sit and read her her te last will and testament. This heifer probably got somebody at the liquor store going to take care of Josh. I'll read it for you. But no, reading me was... It's fundamental. Christopher. What's the uh, next what's the next question for Reva? I'm loving this. There's some great questions and people are very thankful for the information. I actually have a poll up if you guys are in the live chat. Let us know. There's about a thousand of you in here right now. Two funny mamas wants to know, do you have a will and or trust? Just vote yes or no on that. And then another question. Uh, this is great. Jay Hersey, will banks handle a special needs trust? If not, how do you find a re reliable company, please? Second part, someone else earlier asked if there was uh, interest or tax that would need to be paid if it was specifically for a special needs member of their family. So first answer to that question is yes, banks will serve as executors uh, on special needs trust. And if you have a child or an adult with special needs, I really, really encourage you to set up the trust uh, because the way our social security laws are set up and disability laws, it's very difficult for people who have special needs to have assets in their own name. So oftentimes it's just to set up so that money can be you know, used for their benefit, but not necessarily inheriting a big sum of money because it can impact their social security. You may not care about the social security, but you do care about those benefits, those medical benefits that are so important to people with disabilities. So if you have a special needs trust, it, you know, maybe the executor gets a thousand dollars a month and they're taking your child or your adult to the movies. They're going on vacation and they're doing things to benefit 
that individual with special needs, but yet that money is not in the name of that person. So they don't lose their governmental benefits, which are so important. So um, uh, yes, you can find lawyers that specialize in special needs trust, but please do that for your special needs loved ones. And I would, to piggyback on you, Ariva, because I have a child with special needs, I had to redo my entire estate planning because I did not know this. You know, when your child's special needs, there's social security benefits that they get, like Ariva said, but in their name, they can only have so much in that bank account. And if you start exceeding, like, you know, I think people say, oh, they're getting this amount. I just saved the money. And you keep, that means they're, they're going to reduce the social yes. security amount that they can get. So you want to be able to put it over into something else. It's so important if you have a child with special needs to have a special needs trust, because that's different. There's, you know, it's, it's taxable uh, things that are happening there. The social security want the benefits to still keep coming to them that the government has. So don't, I would say, don't skimp on that and try to cut corners because once you're gone, if it's not in place, it's just a whole mountain of stuff. So I just, just finished mine for Jeffrey. And I tell you, I was waking up at nighttime, like two in the morning, like couldn't breathe. Like the worrying about Jeffrey. And and when somebody mentioned it, I realized, oh shoot, I haven't taken care of that. And he don't understand, he don't know how to do any of that. So I finally got it together and I don't I breathe easy, knowing that he's gonna be taken care of. So important, so important because there's so many rules and regulations and you don't want their benefits reduced. You want them to have the maximum benefits that they're entitled to while at the same time live the lifestyle that you know they're accustomed to living and they can do that through that special needs trust. Yes. Come on, Chris, with the with the question. Uh, if I wanted to, this is a great question because we do have another guest today. Uh, Tej will be joining us. Andrea Harrison uh, asked this 14 times in the live chat. If I wanted to leave money to an organization like Move In Day Mafia, how would I go about setting that up? That is a great question, and it leads That's to our next guest. Question. And a lot of nonprofits are the beneficiaries of, you know, the large nest of individuals. So some people who leave all of their money to a nonprofit, you set that up in a trust or a will the same way uh, that you would make an individual the beneficiary of your state. Uh, Special Needs Network, the nonprofit I started, we have a three hundred thousand uh, dollar donation that's going to come to us as a result of an estate of an elderly couple. So they've told us that we are in their will and upon the death of one of these individuals, they have directed $300,000 will come to Special Needs Network. And that's commonly done. Super wealthy people, you know, leave millions and millions of dollars to their universities that they went to, uh, nonprofits, and some even to the exclusion of their kids. You know, so some rich people are like, mm -mm, my kids are fine. I'm leaving all this to charity. So you can definitely leave your money to a charity. Tracy, um, before we leave money to Special Needs Network in your will, this is what I want to ask you. It, you know, you always hear about people. Um, sometimes th th there are people. I have friends who say, "I'm not leaving uh, my kids nothing because I don't want them to be enti right. expecting, entitled, and I want them to work for it." Now I feel differently. I feel like give them something, a little hand up. Once you gone. You pray that they do the right thing and that you taught them right. But how do you feel about that? People who go, I I'm going to leave it to a charity as opposed to anybody in my family. Damn. Well, here's a good reason to have a trust versus a will. Because with a trust and an executor, you can have control over how much pers how much money your young adult gets and when they get it. So if you set the money up in a trust, you can say, Jeffrey's going to get X amount when he turns 25. He'll get yes. X more amount when he turns 30. If he graduates college, he'll get a bonus. You know, you can just get as detailed as you want to get through a trust versus if you leave a will, the will doesn't do that. The will is going to leave, you're leaving it all to Jeffrey. You don't have that person. Uh, you have an executor of the will, but it's paid out upon that person's death. So that's another reason to have a trust. And you see super wealthy people with their kids will often have them getting incremental dollars as they meet milestones like you know if you is get that, is mail, that called a trust baby is that called a trust baby hear that like trust fund babies that have all this money coming to them when they do certain things like graduate college or you know go into the family business so that that's another reason to have a trust 
while some people will have a trust versus a will. How do I feel about that? I, I'm like you. Uh, I uh, I want to give my kids every opportunity uh, that I possibly can, and uh, I'm going to try to set them up. You know, interge intergenerational wealth as Black folks, we have not done enough to create that. And I think if we, those of us, like on this uh, podcast, that have been blessed to be successful and to have assets and resources, we should be definitely making sure that we're passing that down to the next generation so they can pass it down to the next generation so we can close this like 10 to zero, 10 to one wealth gap between white folks and black folks. So yes, black people, leave your money to your kids, please. Ariva, we, we, we have to let you go because we have another guest on, but I want to say before you go, um, first of all, we're very thankful for you. You do so much amazing work. I wanted you to talk about Special Needs Network and the new center that you like and Kim Whitley and your board. Y'all have sacrificed for so many years to build this center for special needs kids. Can you kind of briefly share? Yes. First of all, thank you, Sherry. Uh, you hosted me on the Sherry Shepherd Show and gave us the opportunity to talk about autism and the work that we're doing. You coming here. back. Looking forward to it because everybody's like, oh, I saw you on the Sherry Show. People are super excited, our, our community. Uh, so grateful to, you've hosted events for us. Kim has just been a godsend. She hosts so many things for us. I just could not even imagine, uh, you know, where we would be without her uh, generosity. She's just an amazing, amazing uh, asset to the organization. But we have opened the first ever of its kind uh, center in the heart of South Los Angeles. This is like no other center you've ever seen. And it's for kids literally zero to young adults. And we are doing everything from diagnosis to direct therapies, behavior therapy, speech language therapy. And then those critical things that our young people, as you know, Sherry, when our kids get to be teenagers, they need basic skills like how to cook, how to clean, how to live independently. So we design the center so that they can come in and learn all of those critical independent life skills so they can go out and get jobs. We're going to be doing job training programs and so much. Uh, it's all about giving kids, particularly kids who live in low income communities, vulnerable communities, the access that they need to all of the services that can help them live their best lives. So I'm all about kids uh, and, you know, finding out what their abilities are and focusing on those abilities versus what, you know, their disabilities are. And so we are, changing the game in terms of how we deliver services, culturally competent, anti-racist, anti-blackness, you know, really uh, focusing on people's uh, traditions, their cultures, their norms, all those things that make us different. So when people walk into the center, they see things and uh, dolls and books and things that look like them. So they feel warm, they feel welcome and safe. It's a warm, welcome, safe environment. And when you come back to LA, let me know because I got to give you a tour. I'd love for you to come and check it out. Uh, and if Jeffrey's yeah. ever in LA, he has a home uh, with the Special Needs Network. And you know Can what? You I give just out the website. Website. Oh, yeah. Give out the website because I got something to say. Go ahead. Yes. SNNLA.org. Uh, you can, if you want to donate, if you live in Los Angeles, live in California, you can donate your time. You can volunteer. We just had Microsoft come in and do a whole computer training to our staff. So, you know, nonprofits need everything. They need money, but they also need time and they need volunteers. So even if you don't have money, you can, you know, still volunteer. If you know somebody that lives in LA and you don't, you can tell them to check out our website. They may want to come down. We have this big Christmas event coming up in December where we'll be giving away thousands and thousands of toys. So thousands you know, and thousands. Yes. I'll tell Joshua not to take so much. You can donate some toys to us. So there, there are lots of ways to get involved, but Nothing makes people no. feel better than when they help other people. And, and we just did a sneaker ball. You want to say something, Chris? Oh, no, after you. No, I was just going to say, we just did a sneaker ball. We had a great time there. Um, and Ariva, I, I'm glad you said all what you said, because last podcast, last week, Sherry was complaining about her $5,000 we stole from her at the Pink Pump Affair. Because she didn't oh, get to go on her trip. Because you lost a certificate to wherever we were supposed to get. You bid on the $5,000. Ain't none of us been on the trip. First of all, that so, was, was the point. You know what, Kim, we should honor Cherry Shepherd at the next Pink Pump. 
and come and just love on her and just give her all the pink pump love that we give. And no, no, she's only second year in her talk show. She ain't getting shit. She better go ahead and keep on getting another Ooh, year. Or two. Wait a minute. Huh? Hold on. I want to talk to Ariva for a minute. See, this is the kind of mess that I got to deal with. Ariva, the only point I wanted to make with you, there was no box that I could put in a complaint at the big affair. It's called the Pink Pump Affair. And it's really like swanky. And you have uh, an auction to raise money for the Special Needs Network. I'm all for it. I came in my pink. Everybody was there. I was, you have an auction. That's amazing that you let Kim Whitley host every uh uh time you do it i think that needs to change by the way so anyway okay you can take that picture down well we know kim Arriba, okay, oh, so anyway the only Arriba. complaint that i have because kim get kim get complacent so kim does this auction at the pink pump affair and without even getting authority from anybody somebody won i was bidding on a trip okay but it was a table full of girls they won the trip to spain so without even asking you if this was okay to do, this heifer gonna say, she know I got a budget. We got another trip we gonna give to Sherry for, and it was more than 5,000 by the way, Kim. We gonna give it to Sherry cause she was bidding. That wasn't fair. She didn't talk to me. I tried to let her know with my eyes, Kim, it's over my budget. Come on, stop now. And she, did, she didn't ask you. Kim be doing this stuff when she's the auctioneer cause you don't let nobody else do it but Kim. I'm just saying, there's other people you know who we would excuse me other people who might like the opportunity to be doing the auction i'm just saying <laughs> but well you help put the doors we use that money to put the glass doors on the center thank you thank you sherry yes <laughs> we are so grateful for your your five thousand plus dollars sherry we put it to good use uh we have a tangible building that you can look at and to know that your money was put to good use and we really appreciate you and you know i'm gonna uh, get kim back i think i'm gonna leave you something in my will i want you to name something after me at the special needs network i want one of have when everybody walking the door we have a whole naming rights campaign going and we need to have a sherry shepherd like wing or something yeah. kim, whatever you? kim gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna double that because we gonna have we something with my name on it or either we'll do a two funny mama's wing something but we gonna have a wing. <laughs> Two funny never. mama's wing. What happens in that one? I don't oh, even know. Did she Where say two funny mama's wing? Wait, wait. Yeah. Y'all don't know Chris, what you gonna have the kids do in the two funny mama's oh, wing. I have. No I got an They'd, they'd I, always I show up twenty minutes late and wonder if it's live. Uh, <laughs> we have to let Ariva go. We gotta let him go. You know what? Chris so wants to do the poll. Well, we had a poll. This is actually important before Reva leaves. We did have a poll. You got uh, oh, 900 or 1,000 people in here. 70% of people that answered the poll, Ariva, know, will, or trust. What is a cost-effective way that they can get the ball rolling? Oh, please. Just go, go online. You know, there are all these legal uh, services online. There are apps now. There are simple wheels that you can just do online. That's better than nothing. And please, please, please set aside a little money if you have money to go and see an attorney. You don't have to spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, just a couple of thousand dollars, like the trip you took to see Taylor Swift or Beyonce. That's money you can use to get your wheel, please. please. Oh, I love Taylor and Beyonce. No shame. But I just want folks to have their business in order. 70%. That's too many people. <laughs> we got to get do better. It's, it's, that's urgent, especially if you have children. Yes. It really, 2,500 sounds like a lot. And I know people working and trying to, but when you're gone, that's when the mess starts. And you don't want, you don't, you want to make sure your children are taken care of. Maybe they can make a list of everything they would want to give away. And then you could kind of tell <laughs> if this is kind of complicated about it, if you have to call an attorney or if you can do it online, but at least and look you know online what? and see. I get off of here, I'm going to Google some sites and I'm going to text them to you and you can post them. I, we'll do that. Some I would recommend, but I, I'll, I'll do a little research and send you some that you can text that folks can uh, go online and we'll figure put out it how to their basic will Thank it'll you. be in this you episode's description in this episode's description along with that you've got ariva's handles her website all the information from today and we even have our next guest info as well so great Bye, work ariva. Love, you, ariva. love you ladies see you soon Thank you. Thank you, ariva.
Great work, ladies. We, Big we fans. Have have a we yeah, have a lot to of have fans. A back on. Right, yes, it's never 70, enough. And I know y'all had questions that we didn't get to get to. So if you have questions, leave them. Um, type them in. I'll see them. Chris and I'll copy them, um, and we or can address it. Or and Chris can send them. Yeah, something. <laughs> Yeah, then we can we can ask Reva. We'll bring Reva back to talk about prenups uh, uh, and and protecting yourself and more about the wills because seventy percent not having anything. I'm t- and I'm sure all of y'all can give us a story, a bad funeral story or something. But it's so important, you know. It uh, is it, it would be uh, to take care of your children to make sure because there's it's tax implications if they have special needs with their social security. It's just, you need to have something. And I think you'll be able to breathe better. And if we can get out of that, if we talk about death, it means we don't know. That's the wise thing to do is to plan for your future and your legacy. So. I put, I got to put the all this in my suitcase. Uh, okay, all, the ADD is up. kicking in. I want to bring in our next guest because the, the oh, love well, like I was just saying, I got to put this in my suitcase to you. But I wanted to say, okay, yep, yeah, we got to bring in our next guest because I got to go. No, no, say what you were going to say. No, I was going to just say I got always got to pack stuff to bring to you, but it's fine. So our next guest, it's, a, it's for our black business. Um, we wanted to okay, spotlight. Good. We wanted to spotlight. And I wanted to bring in um, a dear friend of mine and yours, Kim. She has a, a organization called Move In Day Mafia. And I love this woman so much uh, because of the sacrifices she has made. She's like one of these prayer warriors. She was the one that told me, TJ, that God told her, you ever had a friend who called and said, you know, God is speaking to me. God told me to, te- to to call you. What you need me to pray about? Then she come back to you three days later and say, this is what God said. And I didn't want to move to New York to do the talk show. I wanted to do it in LA. And TJ called me and she said, God said, you have to release Jeffrey to me. Who knows him better? his mother or the one that created him. And so I was on the floor crying and she said, you got to go to New York because God says New York is not for you, Sherry. This is where Jeffrey will find his independence. And that, and, and it was just like, and when I tell you wow. being out here, he's taking an Uber by himself. He's got a key to the apartment. He's like learning the city. It's, it's so, you know, and so this woman is so dear to me just very quickly. She was, before she started this organization, she was a big time editor for films. She's edited films that Will Packer and Kim Hart have been in, TV shows that you've seen. When I say she was a big time editor making money and God told her to quit her job and to write a book about making it and, and, you know, being your own publicist and how you do that. And and she was like, I'm going to quit my job. She quit her job. Then she wrote a book that was very successful. Then she started helping other people. Then one day God told her, God said to her, sell your home and move to Atlanta. And he didn't say nothing else to her. She was like, sell my house. Not only did she sell her house for the amount that God had put in her head. This is it's very spiritual with, with TJ. She sold her house. She moved to Atlanta, didn't know nobody. And then COVID hit and there was a quarantine. So she didn't know anybody, couldn't go out to meet anybody. Called me one day and said, Sherry, I'm out here in Atlanta. I'm not with my friends or family. What am I supposed to be doing? Now she's an alum of Howard University. She's graduated from HBCU for Howard. TJ decided on the whim to just do a bingo. Uh, you know, play oh, bingo. Yeah. With oh, yeah, I remember. For, How- for the Howard, for anybody who went to an HBCU and the students joined in and alumni and she was just giving away money because she didn't have nothing to do. Let me tell you how God blessed her. It started getting bigger. People started donating things. I'll donate studio time. I'll donate money. Before I knew it, she called me crying going, like we got $100,000 donated to this bingo to help the students in the school to pay for their tuition, the computers. Like that's how God works in our life. So it's always testimonies, testimonies with TJ. This is, I, I want you to know this woman, how passionate I am about who she is. I could cry. So God told her, she she met somebody and she'll explain it, but she found out that there are foster kids who age out of the foster care system, but they're, they're smart and they get a scholarship to an HBCU. 
Kim, do you know the HBCU only pays their room and their board? All the other stuff, they got to get on their own. If they want to join the football team, Books. they got to yep. buy their Beautiful. own stuff. They don't, they don't have the money. And so a lot of the foster oh. kids would not go to 12th grade because they didn't have no money just to afford clothes, sanitary. They weren't succeeding. They didn't graduate out of college because they, they gave up. And TJ, when she found this out, she made a vow to just take care of these of children who she picked out uh, certain HBCUs and the freshmen that were coming in. She created Move In Day Mafia, she, you know, to take care of kids so that they had all the services they needed to succeed. And I'm so in, in love with this organization because we need our children to succeed. They want to succeed. Mm -hmm. That I went on Celebrity Jeopardy to and you look sure like did. a dumbass. I look like they had seventeen thousand dollars each on each side of me, and I had seventy five dollars. I would never put myself in a position to look like a fool, but the purpose was bigger than me because yes. they paid a lot of money for the charity that I picked, and I chose Move In Day Mafia That's because true. I believe in TJ and what she is doing for these kids. So I just wanted to give y'all this info so we could spotlight this black business um, and help our children succeed. Cause a lot of people don't think about foster kids and what they have to go through and, and the things true. that you need. You just need to go to college and everything taken care of. So with that said, Chris, you take over and we're gonna bring my friend, Kim's friend on. Absolutely. And each and every week, Cedar Lewis from Miracle Buttercream makes it possible to highlight a black business. So support a black business this week. It's wow. What a great cause. But uh, I do want to remind people TFM 15. If you go to miraclebuttercream.com, I'm literally holding some Miracle Buttercream right now. I had uh, dry elbows earlier. No more. That's right. Supple. There you go. I would say they're supple. supple. At this point, shout out to Cedar. It's it's a I've connected Cedar with the last two supported Black Business guests. You are building a community because Cedar wants to actually connect with people, help them out, show, share her secrets and testimony about how Two Funny Mamas has helped her out. Oh, so I love that. To, to be sure to support TFM fifteen, you got the holidays coming up. That's fifteen percent off at miraclebuttercream dot com. But right now, Tej Mercer had the pleasure of meeting her, getting ready for the show, Moving Day Mafia. All of her information is in the live chat as well as the description of the episode. So be sure you follow at T. Is it TJ or Tej? I thought it was it's T. TJ. Okay, TJ Mercer on Instagram, and you can follow yeah, you the. Uh, no, T, I was cracking up. I, was like, I, I swear, I, I got the okay. Either way, lots of photos to go through today. All of this, but here's the official uh, header: TJ Mercer, the ultimate chatterbox of childhood, discovered her superpower of storytelling early. Nearly three decades, TJ thrived in Hollywood as an award-winning TV editor and producer. Next, the Red Bull of joy transitioned her love of storytelling to the stage as a speaker, captivating audiences with their infectious energy, empowering messages, and obviously she's doing Moving Day Mafia now. Give it up for TJ Mercer, everybody. TJ! 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 <laughs> TJ was wearing... Oh, God! TJ. She been wearing them glasses before anybody started wearing them glasses. <laughs> yes glasses is definitely else. glasses are definitely my thing and let me just say sherry this is two funny mamas and i'm over here like okay i can't be over here crying i can't be over here crying like listening to you my story of what happened is crazy and then the other thing i have to say that is crazy that this happened to be the episode i'm on sherry i don't think as long as i've known you that you knew that my fa my father uh, was a where I grew up playing hide and go seeking caskets and because my family owns a funeral home. And it was like, you have got to be kidding. And then TJ, you cut out, you cut I, out I, just a little, you, you gotta, you gotta back that story up. It's a good story. Yeah. You cut out just a little, if you would just restart okay. that story. So the part about my my dad uh, is a mortician, so I grew up playing hide and go seek in caskets. My family's funeral home. And so we would always play funeral. And I would always be the one that want to be like, no, like I'm. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, 
Sharon, you know, I'm always, we have a joke when I call you, you'll go, okay, one well, done now. And so uh, I didn't get to tell you that, oh, I don't think I did, that last week, a one-year-old uh, lady called Moving Day Mafia and said she wanted to leave $50,000 thousand dollars to us in her will so uh it's just apropos that this happened to be episode wow. that you guys invited me on so i'm thrilled i'm looking for um your support because yes friend um yes we did watch celebrity and we're really grateful for you putting yourself out there for us like that kim i have to say thank you to you for being uh being that you are a fisc alum and you know i kept my promise I kept my promise. We do an HBCU bingo. Do an HBCU bingo. I said you were like, well, you need to do something. Else. I said, okay. When God tells me, and this year we moved in nine scholars into Fisk, and you mm -hmm. were it out there. Yep. So thank you to both of you for being huge supporters and actually part of my miracle walking journey. This Can you tell us? Well, first sorry, of all, Kim. wait, before we go any further, yeah, I got I to gotta get this in real quick. I mean, only when the spirit moves you. Can you call me instead of Sherry? Can I get a word? <laughs> Can you tell me to move to New York with Sherry? And then you call Sherry and say, Sherry, Kim needs to be with you uh, in your uh, brownstone and on your show with you. Move you and your child. Why am I talking like? <laughs> but I need a little bit of that uh, spiritual uh, life too. Sherry ain't the only one to know the Lord. You are absolutely <laughs> right, uh, Kim. And I will make sure now that you have given me permission, I will make sure that I bring up your name in my prayer closet with God. And if he tells Thank me you. something, I have your number. Actually, I'll be hugging you uh, in a couple of weeks in Atlanta for your, and so I'll make sure that I tell God, you know, uh, give me something you. for Kim Whitley. That's why you are <laughs> going to come to the show. Thank you. Well, go ahead. Now, and, can uh, we get, I'm talking about Chester. Yes, get to business. Can you tell us, we're going to get back to the business. You are funny. Um, can you tell us about moving day mom? Wait, wait, wait. I got one more thing. I got one more thing before she even goes in first. Okay. I got to get it out because my ADD is setting in and you know I gotta leave because I gotta catch a plane, but TJ, I did um, Fairgood Marshall Foundation in Washington, D.C. Yes! I'm not gonna tell you yes. why. It got something to do with your friend. But okay. I talked to the lady that created it and I okay. told her what you're doing. They give okay. 500 scholarships to HBCU students Going into an HBCU, same yes. thing, low income, everything. I told her about what you're doing. They oh. want to partnership and help you. I forget. Yes. You know, I don't. I forget. Yes. I don't write stuff down. And Sherry, <laughs> see, this is the problem. This the problem why you and TJ can't connect because you be forgetting to tell her testimonies. She can't. She can't. Praise you, God, because you didn't forgot to tell her the blessing. Well, I could have. Well, I didn't know if I this put it on the T J or T J A Y, so I couldn't find a number. Okay, first of all, she did Third Good March about a month ago. This blessing is a month old. Oh Jesus! It's a month old, but it's right on time, Kim. It's right on time. It's right on time. Thank you. <laughs> Cause y'all gotta build the partnership, so I wanted to get exactly. That. And I was waiting till you came on the podcast so I could do it like a giveaway, like what Sherry does. We got this. Sherry go, oh my goodness, you went through that. We got this fifty dollar check. <laughs> Be quiet. Let, you let me tell you, we ain't got no budget. All right, on my show, we, we try to do what we can. Okay. Okay, let, let, let TJ. I'm, I'm gonna sneak off in a minute, so go ahead. Let TJ go. Okay, mm -hmm. well, let TJ start. Well, first of all, you know, because I love surprises, I always trust God to show up with the miracles right on time. So, Kim, thank you. Um, but yeah, moving day, and I gotta say, because I never want to downplay what God does. Sherry said it was a hundred thousand. No, in less than four weeks, 
donors and and people like Sherry and uh, other friends and Kim, we raised almost 1.4 million That's in less right. than four weeks in I cash and prizes. Yeah. So you no, I don't. I don't play down. I don't play down God's miracles. I am a uh, a water walker, and so I always have to make sure that the miracles actually get out there because I couldn't have done that myself. Uh, I, t I asked God, where you probably getting the 100,000, Sherry, is when God gave me the assignment, I said to him, okay, well, I don't even know what this is, what this looks like, what you want me to do. And I said, but if this is really you, I need a sign. And my sign is show me how to raise 100,000 for these kids. And I made three, he told me exactly to call, three phone calls. And I was at 60,000 phone calls. In four weeks, we were at almost 1.4 million in prizes. But as a result of that, we did quite a bit of media. And I met one of my, my, my so the bingo was almost 500 HBCU grads in 2020 lost their graduations. Kim definitely would know this and, and Sherry having a niece at an HBCU know that our graduations are lit. <laughs> and so I was devastated. And so CBS News, Evening News with Nora O'Donnell did an interview with us. And that's where I met one of my grads. And she told me that when she uh, graduated from her HBCU, when she was accepted into her HBCU, she was a foster, she was aging out of foster care and her social worker drove her to camp, pulled up to the curb, let her unload what little she had and then just left her. And that devastated me because until then I had never, ever considered that population of students because my, me going into the Howard university was certainly not, not, not that experience. And when I thought about uh, this, when I researched the stats are, are that 70% of foster care kids dream of going to college yet only 3% go of that 3%, 1% make it to graduation. So it is the mission of moving day mafia that I would love to see it in my lifetime, but we're not into a 100% graduation rate. And Kim, you hit it right on the head that these kids are so stressed out by buying toilet paper, uh, paper towels, cleaning products, deodorant, detergent. They're having to work two to three jobs to just get their basic needs. And so last year, our first year, we moved in 13 scholars at Paul Quinn College in Dallas. This year, I am excited because God did this thing, and we moved in 31 scholars of five HBCUs. Paul Quinn College, Prairie View A&M, Fisk University, Howard University, and Morgan State University. And the vision that I have on this journey we will have a move in day mafia at every single HBCU. Wow. How mm -hmm. can, let's just get the question out there. How can we help? That's the biggest We need thing. money. <laughs> we need money and then more money and more money because it costs $1,700 to move in a scholar. Uh, and that comes with a whole, like our, and these kids are getting like the best that we can. So one of my friends, Nikki Klug, his, who is a celebrity designer, she designs all their rooms to their likes. It's not like we just going out and something generic. We oh. asking, they go through interviews. We, you know, we blow their mind on what we, you know, give to them. And then and we don't just leave it there. We provide them care packages every month of their needs so we need money that and let me tell you let me just make it difficult because until you hear stories like this it, it may not resonate nikki had designed so there's two quick things about two quick scholars so i have a, a kid at prairie view she's been in foster care her entire life siblings she doesn't know where they are when asked when i asked her her dream during the interview she wanted to find her her siblings and help them get their education we moved her in. They're not allowed to see the rooms. It's like a dorm room reveal. We move her in. She sees the room. She's a blown away by the room. But Kim Sherry, it was when I opened the cabinet 
to reveal to her her you know toiletries that we had purchased and she saw that we had bought her a mega pack of always maxi pads is when that baby's face lit up because we had taken care of something as basic that none of us think of as basic as maxi pads and then i had a kid at fist this scholar was at fist kim when we revealed her room she paused Oh, she hates it. She hates it. She hates the room. And then she just screams like, ah! and so she loves the room. And so she's looking around. But when she looks over and sees that we have bought packs of her favorite candy, Kit Kats, that's when that baby just leaned into me and started boohoo crying. That's These me. are kind of the that's kids. Me. <laughs> these are the kids that this is important to them. It's the little things and that they're seeing that they matter to us. And so we're building, you know, a network of great volunteers to help us move in. But at this point, we really need the money for providing for their care packages. And we've got the well, link in the live chat it. to donate. Kim has to leave. I want to I want to speak up for Kim. I know she has to leave. So we're going to cut Kim out. But before you go, Kim, TJ did take a photo for you. We flash that photo back up by her by the sign. What is this, TJ? Kim, That's wouldn't Jubilee that have Hall. been your? I was going to say, wouldn't that have been your dorm? That's right. That's the famous Jubilee Hall at Fisk University. It sits in the middle of our campus, right there. You can see it. It has a ghost at the top. I don't know if you know. At the top of that tower is a lady. There's a ghost in the nighttime. Oh, at fist. Yeah, yeah, I'm very oh. excited. Make sure you you tell everyone because we have listeners and we have viewers how we can help. This is very important and it changes children's uh, lives. I'm gonna I'm gonna break out because I gotta okay. you know, I gotta catch a plane. Uh, but I Kim, will. I um, love I'll to see you. Yes. And I'll see you Saturday night because we're at Bethesda oh, right. Theater in Bethesda, Maryland. Saturday night, uh -huh. we got two shows, 7 o'clock and 9. I believe we're sold out. You might see if you can get some tickets, but uh, we'll we'll see each other I Saturday asked for night. some of your I asked for some of your comps, and, and Kevin told me you ain't had none. I said, that's fine. Hmm. I'm a, okay. <laughs> and since there I is a, 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 a small break, love shout you, out to Kim. Kim. Uh, love you, Kim. Love you, Kim. Love you, TJ. What you say, Chris? Locally, uh, in-house today, Deja is one of our newer engineers. She went to Alcorn State. And then Key, mm. the famous Key, who everybody knows, uh, does all kinds of work here in St. Louis with Harris Stowe. So we've got Harris some Stowe. great Yay! HBCU connections here. Love y'all. Mm -hmm. um, TJ, I wanted to Let's ask. just go to the two shot. <laughs> Let's let the ladies. <laughs> I'm over here. I got. I got this. I'm scratching this. Thing. No, I. I don't need to be well, part of this lovely conversation. Nothing. I'll hang back. You weren't doing nothing gross, Chris. Are y'all right? Uh, I wanted to ask TJ. You take care of the students their first year. What about their second year and their third year and their fourth year? So, and that that's where the donations at MoveInDayMafia.org will help us a lot because. Their second year, we've got 31 scholars who will be sophomores next year. So we still need to provide for them. But then we'll be bringing in more freshmen. So then it just keeps um, adding up. And so the mission is so that none of these kids, can you imagine being at graduation? Je uh, Jeffrey just graduated. Can you, and I'm sure you lost your mind when it, they called his name. And so yes, can you imagine being at a graduation and you're sandwiched in between two kids who have their whole families there call your name and no one is saluting and celebrating you having flowers and all of that we are going to stand in the for that we by the time they get to graduation with us we have a relationship with them we've helped them get to the finish line and so we will be there screaming our heads off when our when our babies graduate Oh my goodness. This is such an amazing thing. Cause like you said, I never thought foster kids would be in college and not be able to take care of just their basic needs. It never yeah. crossed my mind. Cause even my niece uh, was in Norfolk state in Norfolk, Virginia. And it was just something that I just made sure she had was the things mm -hmm. that she needed. So the fact yeah. that their kids, 
They can't do the basic things, join extra. They're working two or three jobs, like you said. So what and, is there, the, and there's the, no, what I would love to share for, you know, the people who are listening. Sherry has watched this thing grow from the very beginning. We're only in year two. Like she, we, we just celebrated our first year anniversary and she's been a huge advocate of pushing me forward. But what I really want to encourage uh, uh, listeners is that miracles abound. When I tell you, you don't have to wait till you have the whole thing figured out. If you see a need, step in and feel it because Shara, if you may recall when i moved in when we moved in the first group of students remember i went to dallas for 13 scholars and i only had 3500 dollars. remember that yes. 3500 dollars. Yeah. and you and actually because we were talking on the phone i said like, i need you to do an appeal i'm down here you got busy you didn't get get around to it but i was like he got to come through because he sent me down here. And an hour before we were going shopping, an hour, God whispered to me who to call. I called. I told her, uh, Tara Egioma. she ended up being one of our very first sponsors of trade and travel. I called her. I told Terry, this is what, you know, God told me to tell you. Didn't know that she was from Dallas. Wasn't, wasn't even thinking about that. And I said, um, I'm really short. I'm trying to move in these kids. And she said, how much do you need? And I said, you know, and I'm cringing like 17,000. And she goes, okay, you'll have it in an hour. That. Oh my God is what a miracle looks like. When we moved in this year, our last stop was in at Prayer View in um, Houston. I had no idea how I was getting my team home. I had, had no idea how I was getting the team home. And I was just like, God, you got us here. You're going to get us home. And lo and behold, at the last minute, a donor came through and we we got home. Now watch this, share this today. I was like, I ain't even gonna bother her. <laughs> and tell this. This happened today. I'm sitting here. I'm in a meeting. I see moving day mafia line ring. I decide to answer it. The lady led with, I'm called on behalf of the largest airline in the world. I want to talk about moving day mafia with you and how we can partner. That just happened. I went from not knowing how I going to get my team home and me, but my team more importantly to today, I get a call that the lady starts the conversation with I'm calling. I work for the biggest airline in the world. That's what walking miracles looks like. And that's what this journey has say, been. This is so amazing. Cause I always, that's why I stress how spiritual this is. This walk has been for you stepping out on faith. And I want to emphasize that even though you're having these big miracles, still money always needs to be coming into the organization because you're constantly taking care of the kids, giving them monthly yep. packages, the basic things that they need. You know, you, you stock their rooms with blankets, computers, everything. So you're all you're constantly needing an influx of money. Constantly. What, uh, and volunteers. Constantly. So would people just could can people get on a monthly no matter what you can yes give. we would absolutely that's what we need we are on the heels of, a, of launching our adopt a scholar but you can simply do that and go on and just set up a monthly payment of 200 dollars a month that's what we need 300 dollars a month you know what i was so touched that when i saw a uh notice come through one has set up a five dollar a month reoccurring payment for us. That really moved me because that lets me know that they are caring about these scholars and dark counts. So that five dollars with your five dollars, with your five dollars, with your five dollars, your five dollars, that's gonna end up buying some uh, a case of water, a pack of paper towels, um, some sanitary pads. Just really think about and what impacts me is when I realize that these kids can't really thrive if they're worried about something we take for granted. They know they've got a roof over their heads, but what they don't know is, are they going to have snacks to study? Like snacks, like yeah. things, 
my mother would have a payday and I, I knew it was payday. And I was like, mom, can I get $40 in my account? Can you tell that these kids don't have a safety net? Everything they need is on their shoulders. Things that are simply of just like, they want to go to a party. They may have to save up to actually have the money to go to a party. And so for us, we want to make sure that these scholars get to have the full HBCU experience that they can have, the full experience. I love this and they can go to it. I know Chris put it in the link, but what's the website so you can hear it? Moveindaymafia.org. Moveindaymafia.org. You can go there to volunteer. You can go there to donate, you know, $5, set up a, a monthly payment. We, we need in kind. So if you have products that you want to date, if you got a roll, Rolodex of cons connections. One of our next dream sponsors is like Procter and Gamble because if you didn't, you know, partner with Procter and Gamble, they have a multitude of products that our scholars will need. And so then our monies can go to other things that the scholars need. But this is a plane that we're still building it. And I'm happy with what we have done, but we have so much farther to go. We want to be in every single HBC. You're getting the call of asking when are you coming to tennessee state when are you coming to um we got a uh, buoy the buoy state the other day i got a call about buoy state so and i'm you know having to tell them we're not there yet we're hopefully coming we're not there yet and so we need help. absolutely so which is why you want know, things like this and keep getting the word out absolutely this is beneficial to us it is really beneficial to us and is then thereby beneficial to our babies. Um, before we let you go, and, and thank you so mm -hmm. much for coming on and, you know, and talking about Moving Day Mafia. It, you were a big time editor, an award winning editor. You made really good money as an editor and you walked away from it, which had to have been hard. I saw the house that you had that you saved up to buy um, in California when God told you to sell it, like what can you speak to people about moving on faith? Cause that's scary. Girl, woo, my favorite topic. So, well, first of all, let me just put it out there. Um, if you go to, and Chris has it, League of Extraordinary Walkers. One of my next assignments is to build this unity of people who you don't have to be a current water walker, but you believe in miracles because God told me, I need you to take on the journey through them having the faith that you have. There are some things that I have, you know, mustard seeds of faith and then have, uh, have watermelon faith, but it really boils down. And let me tell you what my secret is. I have more, I'm more afraid of disappointing God than falling on my face and looking like a failure. Because here's what I do know, my relationship with him, and you don't have to be a Christian to be in the, the League of Extraordinary Water Walkers. Um, but my belief in him is that if I get it wrong, if I misunderstand, he still has a plan for that. And all I have to do is take the next step and the next step and the next step. And I remember one of the things you always like to tease me about is like, Tawan. So you just going to sell your house. My, my government name is Tawan. So sometimes Sherry calls me by my government name. So you going to just got, you going to just sell your house and just leave. And to be honest, you know, I want to share this. Sherry was the very last LA friend that I saw before I left LA and I loved LA. I loved LA, but I like adventure. I like surprises. So I knew God had to have taken me on an adventure. And for those of y'all who don't know that Sherry and I were in a, in my favorite breakfast diner on my last morning in LA. And she, and what I love about my friend, and I'm not going to get emotional, but what I love about my friend is that she has such a heart for people. Y'all, let me just tell you what you see behind on front of the camera is who she is behind camera. And so she was going through the no's. people were telling her no. And I said to her, well, how, why are you depending on someone to hand you a platform that you can build yourself? 
I said, I need you to start a podcast. I need you to do something. You can buy a microphone, run your mouth. You know, if you don't know nothing else, you know how in your mouth. And I left her with that. And I, th that was the one time that I, I kind of, I know I was kind of hard with you. I'm like, I understand the point, but God is you. You, you got the first step. So no one would have been more proud when you sent me the logo for two funny mamas. And this thing went on to win not one, but two NAACP image awards. It made your voice stronger and you have done nothing but stand on your faith, be unapologetic about your faith, and you have been obedient. And so to, to get back to your original question, it really is the obedience. God knows the level you are in your walk. So he not gonna ask you to jump out of an airplane without a parachute in your first venture. You don't have to, now I've jumped out some airplanes without a parachute because my faith had grown to that level. And so I want each of you to make sure, just start where you are. Take the first step, take the first step. When we launched League of Extraordinary Water Walkers last week, all I knew was the name and that God had told me the principles, faith, audacity, resilience, ask boldly, believe long and come collaborate. That's all I knew. We threw up a website. I threw up a funky logo I, and I just moved. And do you not know at our first meeting, nearly 50 people showed up for the first wow. meeting of something that I built in a week only because of taking the first step. That's what faith looks like. Move according to your level of faith, but know that God is going to keep stretching you and having you do bigger and bigger things um, to stretch your faith. It's so funny when you talk about faith, because I, I have forgotten we were together um, and I had written a book years ago called Permission Slips. And this was a oh, book yes. when I Tawan had put all of her stuff in the car. Her and her mother were going to drive to Atlanta. It literally was loaded down with stuff. She had sold her house, but she had a box of books uh, in the driveway. And it said, please take one free. Now, I saw the box of books. Wasn't no big woo. Uh, her mother came out. We went to the diner and had breakfast. We're talking. And I was telling Tawan, everybody's telling me no about this talk show. I, like, nobody will give me. I was just depressed. And Tawan did get on me and she says, stop. Why are you asking for permission for people to give you a platform? Did, Start your yeah. podcast. And I didn't know nothing about doing a podcast. And I'm sitting here going, this bitch is telling me to start a podcast. I don't know how to do no damn podcast. And, and, and she kept saying that. And I'm like, no, I want a talk show. But when she talks about starting where you're at, when we dropped her off, I dropped her back off at the house. That same box that said, take these books for free. Right on top was my box, my book, Permission Slips. Permission now, when slips. I tell you that book was not there when I picked up Tawan, it was there. I was so mad at Tawan. I was like, you get my book away that I gave you. Like, she had not put that book in the box. It was sitting right there on top. And Tawan had just said, why are you waiting for permission? permission. And I took that as a sign to start Two Funny Mamas. And I started doing the research on how, like the name and trademark. And I think I had put out a tweet or chain, put out, named a tweet, Two Funny Mamas. I put out the name. Mm -hmm. And like the next day I get this call from this man named Chris Denman. <laughs> and he, I had, I had been on Chris's uh, podcast in St. Louis to promote a show that I was doing at a comedy club. And Chris mm -hmm. had this very successful podcast. He was producing other people. And he just called out of the blue. Like, I ain't talked to Chris in years. And he called and he was like, you know, I see that you are starting this podcast. If you need some help, I would be willing to help you do the podcast. And I was like, I have like literally it was manna because I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. But Chris was like, I would be happy to do it. He sent me like a rate sheet and he was like, I'm gonna give you a discount on boom, boom, boom. I was like, I got this crazy girl named Kim Whitley. You gotta meet her. That probably was when his life started going downhill. But <laughs> it's, been, it's been rough. And I say, because he just was completely taken by Kim. But even like with that and Chris stepping in, and how long have we been working together, Chris? Is it four years? I mean, we're coming up on four years. Yeah, four years because we're going for a third image award. Yeah, coming up on four years. Crazy. We're coming up on 
four years. And when I tell you we were going to start, and then all of a sudden, same with you, you had moved to Atlanta, COVID hit, and we were in quarantine. So we didn't even have a studio. And Chris was like, we can do it from the house. We Start started where you are. We started where we were. He told us the mm -hmm. equipment we needed. Some of the equipment we needed, the cameras, they were sold out because everybody was starting podcasts because oh, yeah. we were in quarantine. Yeah. Chris had two friends <laughs> who had podcasts. Can I tell you? Like, go, go, you told us, go pick up these cameras. We still ain't gave the cameras back. No, it's been it was, three, do, you know, do you know who's, you know whose cameras they are? Do you know who Theo Ooh. Vaughn is? Theo Vaughn, the comment. Theo Vaughn, his producer gave you one, and Adam Carolla's producer gave you one. Theo oh, Vaughn wow. and Adam Carolla. When I tell you, so shout out, so shout out to Nick and Chris. Shout out to Nick and Chris. Thank you. And at some point, we're going to give you these cameras back <laughs> or give you some brand new ones. But just the fact that they haven't even asked for them back. But in the starting, in the faith move, start where you are. Because once you start, it's like, for me, I believe it's like a chess game with God. You make a move, then God makes another move. You make a move, Girl. God makes a don't you, you start. Move. Don't you start. You, 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 that's why we love each other, me and TJ. You mm -hmm. got to make the move so God can, can, can make his move. And, and you can't do it unless you start. And so that is the, the beginning. And that's to Juan, or that's her government name. TJ said to me, don't ask for permission. Start it. That mm -hmm. was how two funny mamas started. And again, four mm -hmm. years later, two NAACP image awards later, almost 100,000 subscribers just from starting where we are. Then, you know, this is our first sponsor, Sita, who has creates Miracle Buttercream. And I'm hoping that we can Thank partner you, with to provide some uh, lotions for your scholars that you are supporting so that they have lotion because the ash ain't good in no classroom. But Sita, <laughs> <laughs> Dita's company on Two Funny Mamas and she got so many orders and was able to move into mm -hmm. a warehouse to, you know, her territory was enlarged. And so she came back to give to Two Funny Mamas and wanted to sponsor other businesses to help out. Okay, so wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Because, you know, I need you to see, I need you to see, I, I need you, okay, so you know, you get me in my space now. I need you to see what's happening. You move or mission is a domino effect. And so many times we, we think we live in this bubble that what we do doesn't really have impact, not realizing God was positioning you to be an impact to create this domino effect. Now, now Chris, now she elbows become Miss Sita. <laughs> Thank God. And, and it's embarrassing. So, and then your, and the, even what you, the joy that you and Kim have brought, isn't a domino effect. And so, but I, I, I want to encourage my, my fellow water walkers to understand everything that God assigns you. It, you get to have fun doing it, but it ain't really gonna have. It's going to be about somebody else. And I want to double back around to something friend that was ended up coming back and doing the same favor for me when I started bingo. And remember, I was just like, let me just do this. And you, you said to me, this is the first time you had gotten really firm. You are giving away money. Put your name on this and brand this as yours because, and here's the other point I want your, your listeners to pick up because I actually tried to give the bingo idea away. I built the whole thing and wanted to go away to someone else to do, not knowing that it was a part of my assignment. Had I not moved the assignment that was in me, I would have never met the young lady who told me she was a, the coming out of foster care and moving day mafia would have never been created. And then 40 something scholars would not have known that they can have help moving in everything that God assigns you to do that you are bold enough to step out on faith to do it is going to have a dominant effect. It ain't just you. Now, you know, we and say talk about faith all day <laughs> so you and well, I, love, you in my wheelhouse I, love, now. I love talking about faith because 
to take that leap of faith is, you know, sometimes people feel like, oh my gosh, I'm scared. It's hard. But that's what the faith is, is, is taking it despite being scared and still making that move. And that's what I'm so in awe when you call me with the testimony. I'm in awe of the way God is strategically blessing you. There was a blessing that you had. You've always wanted Samsung to be a partner with you. And somebody loved you on Instagram or, or FaceTime or something. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Tawan calls me, TJ calls me and says, oh my gosh, some lady I don't even know who works at Samsung says they want to sponsor me. And I'm going, <laughs> who would have thunk that somebody in the, in the corporation just listened to you and said, "I," because when you go, what can I do? She went to somebody in her company mm-hmm. and told them about Move In Day Mafia. The and mafia. someone was very she intrigued. Sure and said, yeah, let's do this. It- same thing, same thing the day that you told me about Jeffrey. Remember the same thing with Best Buy. So, um, and Chris, please, if, if there's questions, you know, about this, I don't mind answering them, but I don't have access questions. Um, but I had for 10 years, remember Sherry, for 10 years, I had put the hashtag either song is my sponsor. They just don't know it yet. Best Buy is my sponsor. They just don't know it yet. Best Buy was one of, is one of my favorite stores. Women love shoes. I love electronics. Um, so the day that I got the call, what had happened was young lady had been following quietly years and I didn't even know that she worked at Best Buy and then she um, started coming in my box and just you know calling me auntie she's a you know to be my niece she'd come she asked questions you know life and so I would just pour into a mentor having no idea she worked in Best Buy corporate and so one day I get a call and say you know basically I get a, a inbox and basically she says you know auntie I've takes as far as I can go. I need to, I was trying to surprise you because everybody know I love surprises. I'm trying to surprise you, but they're asking for information and she said, um, I work, work for buy. And I'm like, wait, you know, it's, so you're like, all this time you work for Best Buy and I didn't know it. So the let me in that was put out there your dream is you never know who's paying attention i I am called to live and move in secret that's just not built to be but no this is what i'm trying i need help my my friend who is probably still still um yesterday helped realize that i collect people i couple and convince them to get on the plane and take an adventure with me in mirror because i'll rope them in into believing the unimple, and which is what we have been able to do on this journey. And so when I look at Samsung, Best Buy came in, in on day, I was going to an answer, and then you, and I was like, you are not going to believe this. You are not, not going to believe the call. She's like, what God am I now? And I said, I just got a call that Best Buy is giving us, us some, some money. And you, you went, to one. <laughs> And I was like, yes. And then let me tell you how dope she is. Nonchalantly goes, oh, I was going to call and tell you that I just agreed to do Celebrity Jeopardy and I'm going to um, play for Moving Day Mafia. I I was sitting on the toilet when she jumped up. Oh, Oh, TJ. (laughs) I jumped off that toilet. Yes, Chris. (laughs) Sharon, you got when she asked me, I'm going to tell you. I jumped off that toilet and just started screaming. Then I share it. I share. And you were like, you told me that, you know, the, what the minimum was. I don't, I said, I don't care if it's color. The fit you're going to be playing for. But of that came because I'm out with what God called me to do, what he's called me to build. I know this beyond my ability. So know that I'm like, people first things that we did. Uh, last Tuesday in the League of Extraordinary Water Walkers is based on the premise of Peter was the only one who had the audacity to ask Jesus to defy the laws of gravity and get out the boat. It never said any disciples got out and tried it. But Peter was the one that said, you know what, Jesus, I'm walking across the water. 
I want to try that too. We try it. And you, and I told them on Tuesday, you can't convince Peter went over on later practicing how to crip walk on water. You just want to convince me. It's because he had that, Peter had that mentality that I'm just going to ask for what I, he didn't, they in the middle of the, he didn't have to ask on water. He, he should have been asking Jesus, can you come help us row this boat? But Peter saw an opportunity that I had to do what Jesus did. That's what walking on water looks like. And I'm telling you, I if you hang around me long enough, I will convince you that, that anything is possible. I I am yeah, that chick absolutely. that will, will tell you, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely anything is possible. And sometimes God has to, I always tell people, sometimes God has to mature you into being able to handle the reality of what you dreamed about. Because I talk about that, you know, stepping out on faith. My talk show, I've had one of this talk show since uh, as long as I can remember. I did my first pilot for a talk show in 2014. And I got so many no's along the way when mm -hmm. I would try to pitch. But I wasn't, had I gotten a full-fledged talk show and it went, it would have been on the, on the air only one season because I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what gifts I brought. I was very, very insecure. Now I have issues that I deal with. But, you know, at this stage of the game, 56 years old, I know what my assignment is with the Sherry Show. I'm very clear on what the mission is, is to give people an escape through love, through joy, through laughter. And I'm very clear on the gifts that God gave me. So him giving me, making my dream come true in my 20s, I'd have been a nervous wreck. I'd have had a breakdown. I know how to, you know, and so, but along the way, God gives you things that get you towards that dream. Like I got the view. I learned a lot from Barbara Walters. I learned how to have a thick skin. I learned when criticism comes, you know, how I have to, br I've learned how to brush it off. I've learned to speak up. I'm not that person now that will just go, whatever, I'll do whatever you want me to do. What do you want me to, my voice is even deeper. I sound like a daggone man. My voice is so deep. But it's also, it's just like, I wasn't ready for that dream to come to fruition. At 55, God said, you ready. And now I know that he's strategic. This show isn't about me. It's about who it's, I, I'm always praying. And I told you this, before the door opens, I pray for the audience, my live studio audience. And I pray for the people that are gonna watch me on YouTube and who are gonna watch me later on uh, on TV. And I pray that God use me to show them that side of him that loves to laugh, that side of him that has a humor, you know, because yes. sometimes you have to reach people. You got to see them. You got to be able to laugh because they say laughter yeah. is the medicine for the soul. And that's what I go, yeah. God, show them that side of you that has given me yeah. this gift. And sometimes, Tawan, I'm so tired and exhausted. And I go, Lord, I just need fresh jokes. I need fresh mercy. Yeah. I need a fresh everything because yeah. I'm, I, I'm not. I don't feel funny. I'm all over the place with these topics. And once that door pops open, he puts that smile on my face, oh. and I sit in that yep. chair and I don't even think anymore. So whatever y'all look yeah. at and go, oh my God, Sherry's so funny. She can make anything funny. That's God. That's you know. God. So can I can I trans yes. can I can I translate? What I just heard. Um, and what you said, um, you talked about having to mature to the point where you were ready for the talk. I would like to your listeners to just think about the question, what if it takes 50 years? Wait, Wait. say that again because you cut out. Yeah, there, there are just, what? TJ, just a heads up, you are cutting out really uh, a lot. People are still receiving Am this I? it's it's probably your are you on wi-fi yeah yeah, but I, yeah yeah if anybody's in the house watching anything else or something but when we tested earlier it wasn't that I'm bad but uh but everybody is Keep everybody talking. wants you to know they're yeah please do everybody wants you to know they're still receiving the message and everybody is absolutely in love we're getting several notes saying here comes another NAACP image award for this episode. This is the one that should get submitted. I uh, I agree. I think this would lay absolute waste to the self-help category and they would have no chance uh, whatsoever. Sorry, TJ, please continue. 
So translate. That's okay. So I hope. So yeah. So I want to translate, and I apologize. Me and Chris rest earlier. Um, so translate is, is ask yourself what if suddenly takes ten years to come to pass. What if suddenly want it takes 10 yes. years to come to pass? Wow. So what, what happens is people that all of a sudden Sherry has suddenly got a talk show. They don't know the journey it took to the suddenly. There's that it took to get to the suddenly. From hotel, that janky star hotel. 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 We Sherman Oaks. Remember that? That's yeah, part of the journey. Because neither one of us had the money. We, we I was leaving to marriage, uh, and you were, you know, your, what was going on. But that that journey is a part of the dream. You know, there then, that was the adventure to suddenly. Your suddenly to take you take you about 10 to 15 years and the reason is and I hope y'all are getting this I hope I'm breaking up too badly the reason is is that there are people that don't are not in the position to give you the yes my Samsung connection wasn't even working at Samsung until I launched Vendee Mafia they hadn't even started yet so there had to be things and pieces of the puzzle moved in place Suddenly, phone call to happen. My best mm. buy, she had only been there for two, three years. She had to get into position. Or yes, is sometimes being held up into somebody else need to get position. In that. Wow. So that's wow. what I mean by sometimes you're suddenly is going to take you 10 years. Wow. So mine, I started, I just, I said my pilot, my first pilot was 2014. It was not, it was 2004. So 2004 for a pilot of my own talk show, it didn't come to fruition until 2000. I believe it might've been 2021. So that was uh, 17 years, close to 18 years of this dream of doing a talk show had to come to fruition. And it was 17 or 18 years of along the way, taking every opportunity that God gave to me and, and, and learning from all of those opportunities. And so I love talking faith with you. Chris, are there any questions that or anybody want to uh, say anything? Absolutely. So lots of just statements more so uh, than actual questions. Okay. Uh, I am Bianca Brown says I could cry. I needed this. Uh, everybody's just showing so much support. Uh, Cindy, Cheryl, uh, Melee E says, God is using both of you right now. Uh, Life with Kelly says, amen. This is beautiful. Uh, Vanessa, I really want to motivate my family member to do more, to dare to dream for themselves. But so far, I've been unable to, unable to move them along. What do I do? I thought that leading by example would work. But I, I guess this is a good question for both of you. That's a good one. I wanted to ask you, uh, your your website, uh, Water Walkers, is that for anybody oh. to join to? Yes, yes. you go to, to League of Extraordinary, Unique of Extraordinary Water Walkers. We are in a six week uh, adventure now. Uh, we just had the first meeting Tuesday, so you can get the replay and pick up with this this coming Tuesday. Um, it, it, it anybody the only require or the requirements you believe in miracles and you're okay with it, a biblical based organization other than that the more the merrier let's link up and let and it is called again the league of extraordinary water walkers league of extraordinary so you know, you water the walkers of gentlemen you've got the league of extraordinary water walkers the League of Extraordinary Water Walkers. Um, and I wanted to say that because of the woman's question. Everybody is on their own faith journey. So, it, you know, for me, I feel like sometimes you can't make people have a certain kind of faith. It's, it, they, get, they have to get it. But what the power that you have is the prayer. 
that their heart would be open mm-hmm. to receive that they, you know, and yes, you lead by example, but I'm always going, the thing that I can do that I know I, I'm powerful at is prayer. So everybody has, it's like, when, you know, when Tawan said that to me, why you got to wait for permission? I thought she was crazy. I literally was like, you know, I wasn't trying to hear that. Cause I was like, I don't want to do a podcast. I want a talk show, but in doing the podcast, I had to learn how to do that. I had to learn business skills. I had to learn how to put up with personalities that weren't like mine. Kim and I, we've been friends for 30 years, but we still had to learn each other's styles that made us work. Mm -hmm. And I had to, and and like you said, sometimes God got to get other people ready. Cause I had been asking Kim to do something with me for three years prior. And Kim always turned down. And so when I, and it was really for a talk show. I wanted Kim mm-hmm. and my team kept going, go with somebody else. Why don't we call Lonnie Love? Why don't we call Niecy Nash? And I said, it's gotta be Kim Whitley. Like, I don't know mm-hmm. what it is about this girl putting a foot in a camera, but it's got to be Kim Whitley. Kim wasn't ready. And even when we started the podcast, I said, Kim, I will fund the podcast for the first two years. And I'm telling you, I guarantee we are gonna bring in some money. And, and if we don't, you ain't gotta continue. And there have been times that I've said to Kim, I can't do this, Kim. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. And Kim will take the lead. Kim will show Mm -hmm. up even when she tired. I talk about my friends so much. But when I say that girl is so committed to two funny mamas, she will be falling asleep on that camera, but she will show up. So God had to get Kim to the place. That's why we won two NAACP Image Awards because people take to both our personalities. So just like you said, so you can't make, I don't think people have a faith and you can speak to this Tawan, but you can pray and keep getting yourself ready because sometimes you got to be ready for something before they can even step in. What, what say you? So I would say, uh, first of all, check your motive. Why do you want it so badly for them? What is it mm. saying about you. So, I mean, it's not saying, nothing. I'm sorry, Chris, I, I forget what it was. Um, not saying that your her, her motives are not pure. I'm just saying, check your heart. Make sure that's the first thing. But then I think, Sherry, if I may trans game of what, what you just described, you never gave up on Kim. You kept being in her ear because you saw something that she could see. If that's the case for this young lady, you keep holding space for your family. You keep pulling, going after that thing that you uniquely are seeing in them that's possible for them. They've got to walk this journey at their pace. I like to tell people, run your race at your pace. They've got to actually keep walking it at their pace. You never stop praying and holding the space and then have my own business because i tell you if they clean you they in, and you're still having an impact regardless of whether they not there or not but you walking it out in front of them and then holding the space for wedding that would be what i would suggest that's good stuff that's really, is Very this helpful. the kind of thing that you talk about in League of Extraordinary Water Walkers? Yep, that's exactly. <laughs> Next week, we're talking about operating in audacity, of having the audacity to make um, big moves. And one of the things, um, and to go back to the young lady, make sure you point out the little things that your family member doing well. Make sure you're highlighting those things because it's I'm I'm teaching you know my water walkers that be on the hunt for God's miracles look at the small things celebrate the small things but be on the hunt if and celebrate if you uh one of my miracle uh my water walkers posted in our chat today Keandra talked about that she only had four boxes but she, she needs 10 to move and all of a sudden uh uh or something came through and gave more boxes. It's things like that that you're not asking about. You're not thinking about not necessarily related to anybody, but God's still listening. Celebrate that. Like Sherry will know. I will text her everything. Sherry, I got another $5. Dose. You know, she knows I celebrate the big 
and small, and do not despise small beginnings. Can you give the website again for your charity, Move-In Day Mafia, uh, where you're getting foster kids who have been accepted into HBCUs, the, their basic needs being met so that they can go to school and have a chance at success? Yes, moveindaymafia.org. You can click on volunteer. You can click on donate. You can click on both. <laughs> but moveindaymafia.org. Um, we just had a call volunteer meeting. We're going to be four because we have 31 scholars we have to, to walk, but we need funding and raising. Uh, I have, really do need a fundraising person. So if you are here and you, you know it's a challenge and you like, you perceive it as a challenge of getting people to open up their pocket, that ain't my skill. Did I just date myself by saying pocketbook? Wait. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? Say pocketbook. <laughs> um, but you, if you say you take a challenge, people to open their wallet um, and donate, we those we need those big money as well that can just through and just take care of all funds so that we can continue to add on. It definitely is going to take a village. Well, I gotta get, I gotta order Jeffrey some food because I'm not cooking, um, yes, and I, I have to pack. My because, um, I thank you for coming on. I gotta pack because I gotta go out of town too. I gotta meet Kim on Saturday so we could perform. So I gotta get some stuff down. And uh, I want to tell you, if you are in the New York area and you want to be on our show on Monday, go to SherryShowTV.com to get tickets. Our uh, Halloween show is gonna be off the hook. I didn't think that we could top last year bring being Vampire Bridgerton, but this this Halloween here, this Halloween here is going to be uh, pretty amazing. So if you want to be in the audience uh, for tickets, go to SherryShowTV.com. And um, I thank you for coming on, TJ. I thank you for sharing your testimony. Uh, like TJ said, Move In Day Mafia, yes, they are getting sponsors to help them. But, you know, whenever you have a nonprofit like Ariva with her special needs. Money is always needed. It is never, oh, I gave to them, they got it. It's always needed to continue the work that has been started. So Ariva- And right now, everybody is a volunteer. We're running off of volunteers and commitment. So no one is um, on salary. So we need you know, to be able to pay our people so they can work full time in it but yeah. you are absolutely right it's constantly we need funding so thank you our, our listeners our subscribers and our viewers if you can find anything in your heart uh you can go to move in and if you really want tawan is a great woman of faith she's such a great teacher and motivator if you like to learn how to activate faith how to be audacious in your faith you know, uh, how to believe and receive miracles. And it ain't no funny, weird stuff. It's a, it's a very spiritual uh, class. Tawan is a great Tawan. TJ is a great teacher. <laughs> uh, you can go to League of Extraordinary Water Workers. Is it dot .com or dot .org? Dot .com, waterwalkers.com. Dot waterwalkers, League of Extraordinary Water Walkers, dot .com. To learn how to be audacious in your faith. Uh, that all my friends are audacious about their faith and I'm, I'm so proud mm -hmm. of them. So we're going to end it here because my son is, is he keep coming back and forth because he's hungry. So I need to feed him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. And Chris, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, cause God did send you, even though I get mad at you and won't talk to you. I really do appreciate who oh. you are. And because, uh, I, I want people to know about Chris Denman. He Yes, this is a business for him. He's the president and CEO of this company in St. Louis. He has other people that he does podcasts for, but he's taken two funny mamas on and he gives more than what he charges. We go to Chris, we don't have a set time. Chris has been trying to get us to get a set time for our podcast. And it was literally, hey, Chris, it's, we available in an hour to do the podcast. Chris will be on his way home. 
He'll be doing another podcast. He got dinner plans, but he will always shift to accommodate us. And we certainly appreciate, Chris, what you have done for Two Funny Mamas. Chris has the NAACP Image Award because he deserves it, because he puts in so much effort. He believes and he's got the biggest dreams for us, but he can't get Kim and I together enough to be sharing the dreams. But I know God is going to bless Chris because he's got an amazing heart. Uh, if he could just fall out of love with Kim because she's going to break that dang on heart of his. But he has the most amazing heart. And we so appreciate, Chris, what you have done and the effort that you put in for Two Funny Mamas. So when y'all be getting on Chris, I'm like, Chris, let the ladies talk. And Chris, we do, we love Chris. And so he has added so much to Two Funny Mamas. And, and we just all family. Only time I get mad when he cut me off, like when I'm telling a great story, he'd be like, we got to move. But y'all understand why you do, Chris. I, you know, I love it. Entrance. Yep, it's but, so, uh, so kind, by the way. And if you'd wear headphones, we wouldn't cut each other off as much. So I just wanted to... <laughs> uh, I just wanted, my hair. I'm not wearing no hair. No, nah, that's fair enough. No, that's really very sweet, very kind. And I love being a part of the show and all the fun. And it is wild when you connect all those dots that you all have, uh, have connected today. I do feel a little bit like a dog that was just given a cheeseburger and I'm about to get like <laughs> back, <laughs> back on the back of the head. That was a lot of nice stuff. And I'm thinking and I'm sitting here and I'm going, TJ, now you wouldn't let anything happen in front of TJ. Like this would be a really good <laughs> way to say. <laughs> like, TJ, uh, now, y'all gonna you know, get an attitude hmm. when you about something, Chris. Yeah. No, it is. So it's I'm a in pleasure. The mood, I'm telling you. I'm in that I, faith mood. I'm telling you, thank you, because you're going to make me mad next week. It, it's all, you know, you have to have a scapegoat for something. So, no, it's <laughs> it's a pleasure, and uh, we're going to keep rocking it. Just so everybody knows, we are trying to do bigger, better things, and, uh, you know, we'll we'll keep pushing because the fans stick to it. So, thank you. And we appreciate our fans, because this podcast, how long is this podcast, Chris? We're at seven hours and 43 minutes uh, clocking in, so... <laughs> Uh, believe what, how long was this podcast uh what is it deja uh let me see i think we're at a, probably close to three hours two and a half two hours wow. oh just over two hours you said deja. Just over two hours. and here i was been trying to get crystal can we do this for 30 minutes but it's always so much amazing information we go over and so we thank everybody for their patience and you'll be able to see this in its entirety on uh, Two Funny Mamas on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. Go see, if you're in the Delaware area, go support Kim Whitley. She's a, It's a Kim show, Kim, Whit Kim Wayans, Kim Coles, Kim Fields, and Kim Whitley. It's a free event at the, uh, Kim, uh, Chris has got it, I think it's at the Delaware Public Library Do you have tomorrow. Flyer? Yeah. Uh, that we, flyer. We got a Kim flyer. is on a comedy yeah. tour because she's a SAG actor and she's on strike. So please support her. You can go to her IG, uh, Kim Whitley, to find out what city she's going to be in. It's a really, we, we praying for SAG after the end this strike. Uh, so this is called the Kims of Comedy. We praying for the strike to be over because... By the because, way, after yeah. you, sorry. Nope, there it was. I just interrupted you. Well, people, like now, this, it's getting serious. Like, people, you, you missed three or four checks. Mm. Your bill collectors are starting to go, we're going to take your home. Like, you know, yeah. you can't pay fees and I'm not in Kim's wallet at all. She's very blessed, but she takes care of a village. You know, y'all know her daddy. Y'all know Joshua. You just, you know, and so Kim is back on the road doing stand up. That's the blessing of what we do. If everything ended now, our asses be on that damn road doing comedy. So Kim, so please support Kim if you're in the Especially city that she should be at the Cincinnati Improv, Cleveland Improv. There's a flyer up. with all dates. those dates. Yeah, we've got a yeah, flyer with all to... those dates. I wanted to say this too. If you're in Delaware and you can see all those Kims, nothing that cool has happened in it Delaware this year. Are you serious? <laughs> a free event? Do you understand? Free? I can't even believe that they're doing this for free with all of these Kims. And the thing and they're you know, that's a blessing because they flew everybody in. That takes money. You talking celebrities. So the fact that's going to, if you're in the Delaware area, go and see these women because they're going to be a hoot. Every single one of them, funny as heck. And then Kim and I are in Bethesda, Maryland, Saturday night, two shows, 7 o'clock and 9. I believe we're sold out. Officially. Um, but we're, 
We're about mm -hmm. to hit the road uh, January through March. We've got a big Mother's Day show. I don't know if we're doing our big Mother's Day show in Dallas or in South Carolina. Those are the two venues we're looking at. So um, support my girl. And and thank you for supporting Two Funny Mamas. And okay, I'm coming. I got to be a mother right now. TJ, I love you. Movendemafia.org and leave with extraordinarywaterwalkers.com to learn about having mm -hmm. an audacious faith so that you can get audaciously big miracles that are going to affect not only you, but so many people around you. And Chris Denman at Midcoast Media for all your podcast needs. <laughs> and Beth and John and all the team here, everybody's so amazing. And so, uh, such a big part of this. And on behalf, of, yeah, on behalf of Kim Whitley, because she had to go get on a plane. And, and hey, she would say the same. One more. We just got reminded in the chat. And how could I? I'm on the show with her. She busts out. She brought hundreds of people here to the music festival for the Picasso kickback. You've got a spinoff show, Tighten Up Tuesdays with B Flat, every Tuesday. Why? Because you blessed it, Sherry. That's right. Tighten Up Tuesdays has B Flat. Uh, come watch her. We hung out here in uh, New York and she tore the roof down Incredible. doing stand up and she stayed at the house. <laughs> B flat had to walk up all these. And you notice TJ because you stay with me. The guest room, you got to go up like 60 flights of stairs. There's so many dang on stairs. And TJ, you and B flat, they bring these heavy ass suitcases. And I'm like, how the heck we going to get this big old coffin up all these? Stairs. I'm trying to get a like, I'm trying to get like a condo or something with a guest room. Damn but I make my friends, and that's when you gonna make your friends when you come. You gotta walk up. It's like this is a four level brownstone, so the guest room's at the top in my office. So uh, B flat came and was complaining the whole day on time until she got underneath the covers and fell asleep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sherry, well. before we leave, how yeah. did it, how would, in one sentence, how did it sound whenever B flat was upset with the uh, stairs? It, she, cursing. You have, you have a good she B flat. Cursing. You have a good B flat. I was cursing. Thinking... Oh, B Sherry. Flat. I got all these damn stairs. Why you always on the top floor? Of the stairs? You know my knees is bad. That's why we're going to stay with somebody else. That's B flat. <laughs> By the way, we won on Kevin Hart's uh, show, Game Face, B Flat, and I um, won. Uh, it was really, really wonderful. So she's amazing. She will be on my Laugh Lounge very, very soon. So, uh, yes. And then Ariva Martin's uh, uh, website is uh, special needs network. Is it dot yep. org or dot com? Yes, but go go to Ariva's Instagram at Ariva Martin, and you can check out SpecialNeedsNetwork.org. Uh, but it's also, again, if you're listening, it's in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, also in the description. All your info there, and you can uh, support the ladies that were on today, along with uh, Cedar and Miracle yes. Buttercream. Great show, Sherry, Thank TJ. You. Everybody is still. Thank you, Cedar. All right, y'all. Bye bye. God bless you. Thanks, Logan. Thanks, Deja. Bye. Bye. Bye.